Hello, people of the Dick Picks community, and welcome. This is Matt, Sam, and Max. <laughs> here. Um, we so we've been making the Doctor Who video, uh, which will be out now, and you can check that out if you haven't already. You should have seen that. If you're going to watch this, it's a companion piece video. Uh, if it's going to be anything, uh, there'll be a link to that in the description. So check out that video. But whilst we've been making this Doctor Who process, one of the vid one of the things me and Sam did uh, whilst watching Doctor Who is we rated every single episode of New Who um, and gave our overall season ratings. And that didn't play out we didn't use that in the main video at all but i thought it'd be fun to make a powerpoint presentation <laughs> uh to walk you through our ratings and we can talk about doctor who and we're doing all of new who we're like we're going to talk about every single new episode of new who all of them oh every oh, it's, this is going to be a long video so get a cup of tea get a coffee maybe sit down maybe get a vodka and coke and get ready to have us, Max and Sam, just talk through all of Doctor talk Who. Talk about our official Do nitpicks Doctor Who ratings all right. for everyone. Absolutely. So let's get this bad boy started. Let's get it on the road. Um, so season one. We're starting off with season one, the big boy, the big banger, Christopher Eccleston, and uh, what's the name of the actor who plays Rose? Billy Piper. Billy Piper. Christopher Eccleston. The Pied and Billy Piper, Piper of Doctor Who. Um, what was your how did you because your whole family watched Doctor Who didn't they no was it just you it's just me how did you end up picking up Doctor Who and did you start with season one it. yeah I saw the DVD box set of the first season in the TARDIS packaging and said that I wanted it because I like the box set <laughs> and then our man put the first disc in and I was like oh because I think if we had to say there was any Doctor... If I had to say there was any Doctor that was my Doctor, it would have to be Christopher Eccleston. That's the one that introduced me to Doctor Who. Yeah, same. And the guy I grew up on. Um, and great season. Interesting season. But let's excavate that further. Absolutely. So, let's the excavation begin. So we're giving Rose an 8 out of 10. We gave Rose an 8 out of 10. This is a sick way to start off a season. Absolutely. I think. This is like... This is because I th I still think if you're going to introduce anyone to Doctor Who anyway, it would be with Rose. Yeah, you would want to show them Rose because it it sets up absolutely everything you need in Doctor Who. It's got some really weird villains. It's got some some fun Doctor Who elements. And to Eccleston it. is so good in this episode because you've got there's so many great bits to Rose because there's the bit where he does the monologue. I can feel it, Rose. Spinning at a thousand miles an hour, I can feel it. Every single human on this tiny planet. And if I let go, yeah, that's who I am. Um, yeah, it's it. Pre I mean, this this like it speaks for itself. It it's does. Sick. It's sick. Yeah. You should. Ju everyone knows Rose. If you know Doctor Who, most people have seen Rose. It's the one you want to start with. It's definitely if you the one you want to start with. Someone and a, a, a solid eight out of ten, which is like a great way to start the season Absolutely. as well. Um, followed up by the End of the World, which, which is, is an, also, also an eight, eight, eight out of ten. ten. So like when you when you go in and you start with rose and then you go into the end of the world because rose like eases you into it and it's slow with how it introduces its crazy shit and then but the <laughs> end of the world it's like you have eccleston and rose tyler going to a space base to watch the end of the worlds together and the end of a ridiculous planet. amount of like stupid aliens there's so many yeah. great aliens there's the me reoccurring memes Oh yeah, yeah, there's yeah. the isn't it like the, the institution the of the meme and it's the reoccurring meme. The reoccurring mm, meme is yeah. that actually what they're called? Yeah, I think so. Uh, they're yeah. basically the villain of this are, are a race called the memes. Um, Cassandra and controls Cassandra them. Cassandra controls them. He's a giant, giant bit of skin. Flesh skin. Yeah. Uh, why is this episode an eight out of ten for you? For me, because it, it's got some real great stuff with uh, Rose and the Doctor's relationship. And the way yeah. that it starts off with them sort of not really knowing each other and then it ends with him talking about the time war. I think that's really smart. Yeah. And then, you know, the the threat is genuine. Those creepy spiders. Cassandra's really great. Cassandra uh, is The so special fun. effects still hold up. They don't It look doesn't bad. look bad. The, big, the, fun, the funny thing with this season, because I remember we were having a conversation a uh, while back, because we keep talking about Doctor Who. This is our outlet. We actually can't stop. Oh, it's really problematic. But we were talking about it and... I was at one point, this was ages ago anyway, and I, I know your opinion's changed since, but I was talking about how Eccleston is still the best way to introduce someone to it. And you were like, 
oh, well, the effects are dated. And I, th- oh, it looks dated. And I thought about that. And in some points it does. Yeah. But it, it does surprisingly look better than I always remember yeah, it. Yeah. It never looks as bad as I it's remember. It's the idea of the end of humanity as well, thematically. It goes into the idea of what makes a human a human yeah. and the end of things. And it's a yeah. pretty big dick energy move for yeah. that to be the first place you take Absolutely. your and, companion. And I think Rowan, He's like, look at your planet. It's yeah, about it's to dying. die. It's like the weirdest first <laughs> yeah. like, like place that he takes her traveling. And, Ro- and Rose is also like really well put into and the scene. And then she phones up her mum yes. while she's there as well. That's so, really good. Yeah, yeah, so there's so many emotionally really evocative Well moments. done, Russell. You're really smashing it. This is the Ru- yeah, Russell T's era. Um, then the Unquiet Dead. You're, Six you, out of ten. You're, you're more familiar I with like this, this than one. I am. It's I, I, Mark Gatiss's first episode. The only thing it's I re- his least whack episode. It's his like, best <laughs> episode he's one. ever written. Ch- Dickens is really fun. He's really yeah. well performed um, by Simon Callow. Um, yeah, really, this really was the good. Fir- this was the first episode that properly scared me when I was a kid. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you had that, but like this scared no, me quite a lot. No, it didn't scare me because of the zombie people, the ghost people really <laughs> disturbed me. It's just that weird Welsh young. like transmission. Like I've seen your future, all those metal birds in the <laughs> sky. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it is fun because like Christopher Eccleston is so genuinely like chuffed to He's meet exciting Dickens. To, yeah. see, to meet Dickens. Rose yeah. doesn't really do a whole it's, lot. It's all, it, she kind of connects with Gwen because it always does. It doesn't. Off, is, I think it's quite hard for them to make the Doctor meet historical figures yeah. quite often, actually. Yeah. The fact that it's ghosts as well, it adds to it. And like Dickens is well chuffed at the end. Personally, I would give it a seven, but then it is quite forgettable. So yeah, see, I can't... I, like it, does, it never resonated that strongly so with me. So we decided on a six. Six, six yeah. out of ten. Six this is, is cumulative. It's better we, than average. The yeah. reason these ratings are better than your average ratings is because it's been... You know, we've debated, we've debated it, debated it yeah. yeah, so that's why our opinion you can trust more. That's the shared, <laughs> the shared brain. <laughs> you should definitely <laughs> listen, listen to, to anyone else's opinions. <laughs> if you're watching you. this. Oh, by the way, um, I, Nitpicks is a character, so all our opinions... That we're saying today are just a character. It's just opinion. a character's so, opinions. Yeah. They're not actually yeah. our actual. <laughs> we're just opinion. playing. We're playing our, characters. We're, this yeah. is all just fake. This is all fake. We've this never, we've fake, never yeah. had been sincere to you ever. Let's do the next one. Yeah. Hey. So two, it's the first two-parter. Russell T I comes up with the Slavine. first two-parter. Yeah, fourteen I, out of twenty. Fourteen out of twenty, so which is seven decent. average. Each yeah, one. both of them were yeah. sevens. Yeah. As I, well, I like yeah. Harriet Jones. I like Harriet the Jones. shit. The the first episode's a bit better because Rose comes back and she's been gone for a whole year. Uh, and well, I really like that. Yeah, she's been gone for a whole year. N- like, oh um, yeah, when they return to the mum, and, and it's like, yeah. Well, I always love it when they play with time shit. Anyway, yeah, yeah. it's a really good way to kick off the well, episode. It's like, and they're where sitting have you on the been? Roof. And she's like traveling. It's like your passports in the yeah, like, and there's been missing yeah, flyers yeah. put out as well. Yeah, yeah. there's because they're, they're, it really sets up a really great relationship with Chris Eccleston, yeah. the Ninth Doctor, and Jackie Tyler. Yeah, I really like that because the, you always got the sense that the Christopher Eccleston's Doctor felt much more like. He felt like similarly dangerous to how like Capaldi feels later yeah, on, I yeah. think. But like he was the only doctor up until then that like actually had that like edge where because you could, it's a big theme that they make you question whether Christopher Eccleston's actually a safe person for her to travel with yeah, as well. Exactly, yeah. um, and that's something they explore. Mi- Mickey as well is really upset as well. Yeah, yeah. And but then he's really well set up. This, as a character. It, this Slavine are really weirdly underrated because Russell T lo- like loves <laughs> he <them>. loves the <laughs> he's putting them in stuff, <laughs> but like no one else likes them like, I right? really like the Slavine. but cool. I like the Slavine. Would they're you... a bit better than the Zygons because they actually kill the people and then they yeah. wear their skin they're a bit more sinister yeah. and, and, then, and they've got the they've f- got like a lot of personality the as fact aliens. that they're always Welsh as well really adds to the <laughs> characterization of the Slavine. <laughs> I never even noticed yeah, that yeah there's always like fat Welsh people so it's really funny yeah. Um, 14 yeah, out of 10 I, I mean, seven's yeah, fair seven's as fair. well because it, it is a memorable thing you always remember the Slavine and it's yeah. what you associate with Eccleston's run yeah, yeah. really strong strong yeah. though do you think like the Slovene showing up in the Sarah Jane Chronicles like lessons there I know they were always for sure, cheesy yeah, for but sure. like it makes you take it less seriously now when you see them well in the I Christmas don't know season. if you could do them on reinterpret the Slovene because they're so like perfect for like 2005 <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know how you could redo them dark edgy Slovene yeah. movie I, really I think like, out of all the aliens to we were bring talking back about it, yeah. and then I said you can't do them unless you have the unzipping of the skin yeah. and the, 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 the like me. Mm. you can't do that like you can't if you can't do that then you can't redo the Slovene because it's like really important to their stuff yeah yeah move on yeah let's move on (laughs) dalek (laughs) nine baby nine out of ten written by robert sherman (coughs) robert sherman 
who wrote uh, Jubilee. Which is the best Dalek story, but it's an au- audio, audio book. It's a drama. big Finnish story. It's a big Finnish and story, so if you don't know what to uh, Chimes of Midnight. Uh, which is also really good. Which is also really good. Book. But this Dalek is, is... This is the only episode he ever wrote of Doctor Who. Really? Yeah. Ever? It's so good, yeah. He, why don't they bring him back? I don't know. I imagine he must have been like really horrible to work with. Yeah. Or he just like wrote Dalek and was like, I don't want to, I don't need no. to do anymore. Yeah. It's amazing. Dalek's Set in really 2012. Superb. Set in 2012. It's got loads of like, it's <laughs> borrowed bits. It's borrowed lots of little bits from, from Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah. If you listen to it, you can recognize that. But yeah. It's just on its own, it holds up anyway. And it works really you get nicely. You see inside his shell. Yeah. You've got Tenant. Not Tether, uh, Eccleston, Eccleston leading, freaking out at the yeah, Dalek. Le- going, yeah. I can't believe And you. leading the siege, and then there's Henry Van Staten, yeah. who's uh, just like owns the, the Dalek internet. Dalek going up the stairs. And then also something I really like about this is Adam, who works in the base, joins the Doctor at the end of the episode, which is like really weird. Oh, the guy who has yeah, the open yeah, brain yeah, thing. Yeah, that's in the next one, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, Dalek speaks for itself. I would say yeah, if you're going to go blitz through Who, you I would just... say do Rose, then do Dalek. Yeah. Is the end other of episode, the world, though. The other episodes are sick. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. End of the world, maybe to get the time law, time war context. Yeah. But like, if you really want to blitz it, you like, can just you go, can go straight from Rose to Dalek. It introduces the Daleks perfectly. It's the best Dalek New Who episode. It's the best Dalek New Who There isn't Who a better episode. one out yet. Yeah. No. And they, they, they never great. topped this one. Yeah. Yeah. They never did. Uh, but yeah, there's like there, it is just really well done. And it's and it's distur- it is quite and freaky. He uses the balls to kill me, commit suicide. <laughs> yeah. His little the balls come out of the dark so and kills himself. There's uh, lots Yeah, I think it speaks like, for itself. It does, sick. Yeah. Check it out. I mean, yeah, you probably The have. Long Game with Simon Pegg, the worst <laughs> episode the worst episode in this season. Yeah, Rose looks fit at it though. Yeah, it's not so bad for the worst one. Like no, it's just really ten. difficult four to out rewatch. Of ten is fine. If you've four seen out it out once, you've s you do not it's got watch it again. It, from my memory it's got like really because like this was the first one we watched, so now that's this season is the furthest away, even though we've yeah. watched some of them. But the thing that really I do remember it looking quite good. I like the sets of it, the whole yeah. location. Well they reuse the sets. I know, yeah. Yeah, and I think they're better used in the in the, in the finale. Siege. Yeah. Oh. Um. But yeah, I mean, I I don't hate this episode, but nah. I just think like the the CGI <laughs> villain who's glued to the ceiling. Yeah. Simon Pegg is really overacting. What's the as plot well. in it? What is the plot? So they go they go there and it's set in the future it's and the like doctors all like no no that's the, the second do- one yeah. the doctors are like this shouldn't be the future you guys you know you guys are way dumb. And then they find out that they're like they're all using like weird brain stuff that's right. happening. And Adam's there and he gets a brain thing. Yeah, so I remember doctor, Adam getting the brain thing. The doctor then leaves him home. And it's With like, the brain thing? Yeah, he leaves him at home and his mum goes, oh, it was like that. And his brain opens. That's the last time we see Adam. <laughs> But she did and I think spinner. Eccleston was really upset because it was like she she had a crush on him, so he keeps on calling Adam her boyfriend. He's like your boyfriend. Well, who? Had, <laughs> oh, Rose had a crush on him. Well, on Adam. Well, yeah, he's just a bit jealous of Adam. Well, the doctor's yeah. always jealous of any man. Yeah, he hates men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does hate men. It's, it's not very good. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can skip this yeah. one if you haven't seen <laughs> Doctor Who. But why are you watching this video if you haven't seen Doctor you Who? Idiot. It's such a waste <laughs> you of your time. Idiot. Unless you like like us. But I mean, there's other. <laughs> <laughs> Father's, Father's Day. Day. I really like this one. I can't believe it's a five. It's not. It's. it's I okay. rewatched it fairly recently. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, the Ro- the Rose relationship with the father stuff is good. It's, yeah, it, which is what this whole episode is. Yeah, it, but the, the monsters are a bit like, I yeah, don't but know, they don't hold up very they're, well. Yeah, they're not they supposed don't hold to. Up. I, they're not supposed to be that good. Like they're they're not they're not like. Oh they're come just, on! They're not they're supposed just... to be that good. No. no one said that in the writing room. No one went. These monsters shouldn't be that good. I look. I really like the fact that what happens in this episode, which is really unique to who, it only ever happens again in season nine, is that they go to like so she can be with him when he dies and yeah. then she fails because she's just too emotional she's yeah. like, ah. so she's like can we do it again Yeah. and then they go back she in time sees. and they see the back of their own heads yeah, which yeah. Is, I really like in time travel but um, then a really weird shit happens where they run in front of themselves to save them and then the older versions of them just dissipate like back to the future style they go oh. like they stop existing oh. but that doesn't make any sense because no. if that actually 
because they had did, to they would have it, to close do they the, split off into a different yeah. universe well, I that's don't the know. idea is that it's yeah. a different universe uh, yeah it doesn't it i be. don't yeah it's I don't bullshit know. doctor who doesn't know its own rules but i really i really like the stuff with young rose young jackie uh i really like the argument between uh eccleston and rose because actually like he's like he she's like really messed up but the doctor's mm. like he gets annoyed, but he's like, it's like they're not even really that close. Yeah, uh, which, is a, that well. which is why I feel it's probably placed in the wrong time for episode eight. It should have been a bit too been, early. Um, yeah, it should have been a bit later because, and then also he's like, "Was this your plan all along? Is that why you've been traveling with me?" Which I really like. Oh uh, yeah, that's good. Um, and then there's some there's a really great scene as well where these two people are like, they're like oh, I know we're not that important, but, like, do you think we'll be okay? And he's like, no one's not important. And it's a really good Eccleston scene. Yeah. So that's everything I like And the, and the dad that. character is pretty good as I well. I think it's important I for don't Rose. Know it's important to watch this. in this episode until later on, though. It's important to watch this later. so that the cyber two-parter yeah. makes Unsabers. sense. But the guy who wrote this also was a showrunner on, I think, Life on Mars. Oh. And he wrote some more episodes, but weirdly he didn't write the Cyberman one. And if he had written the Cyberman one, it would have made more sense because he invented Pete Tyler. But it doesn't matter. It is what it is. It is what it is. Onwards and upwards. And Yay! onwards and upwards indeed. We get the next two Average parts. Average eight out of ten for each one. <laughs> yeah, it's so which good. makes sense. It's, it's so really, good. The Empty Child and the Doctor Dancers um it's just like classic who it's yeah. just like this really is this was the moment people went doctor doctor who's so genuinely legit. scary this yeah. this scared the shit out of me when i was a kid See, it's weird like this did not scare me like as much it as really terrified me because <laughs> i i i had i like was watching it on the on my, um computer and when it when there was a kid at the door and he was like, I need my mummy. Mm. And he was about to open the door. I was like, no, no. And then I stopped <laughs> it and I went to sleep. Did and you? I was like, oh, I couldn't do it. Oh, and then I went back to it. I got to that point and he opens the door and there's no one there. And I was like, oh, fuck <laughs> off, you cut, Moffat. You dickheads, yeah. <laughs> Stephen um, Moffat's first two episodes. Yeah, um, as soon as he got a whiff that this was coming back, Moffat was on it. Yeah, so it does, at the time, this was Moffat, like, what, season one it. was only going to be six episodes. And Moffat really? was asked to write one of those six, and then it evolved and changed. But then oh. he got a two-parter. Yeah. Not bad. And, it's and one he of the, really, it's really does prove out. himself. It yeah. really is Everyone's sick. on fault. Also, Captain Jack Harkness Captain is in this Captain Jack one. Harkness he's is in great. it. He's one of the best, like, This new is his best characters. episode, I'd say. Yeah. I would no, say he doesn't get any better is. after this. I think, he get, I think he's okay in Utopia. Yeah. He's pretty good in Utopia. He gets. He is underused after that, though. Yeah, but he's really, really slimy in this. Slimy really in this. I really like how slimy yeah, he's he is. Very, he's very much... He, like, is very much, like, walks the line this between cocksure, being good and like, bad. I also think this this one is particularly has a really well-realised, um, like, era. Like, yeah. the whole World War Two setting feels really good in yeah. this. In a way that sometimes it doesn't with who. Yeah, but. and also, what happens in this episode is the guy sees the gas mask come out of him. Yeah. He watches it, and then he's, like, freaks out, and he's just like, oh, my God. Like, I'm in shock. <laughs> like, he's in complete shock. Yeah. Which is really good. You don't mm. often see that in here. But, yeah. Uh, moving one on. Of, one of my favourite scenes from oh. this... Sorry. I, I just remembered you that... you got to like, gush your creamy guts out on this. One of my favourite bits is when she's got all the food. I love the food scene. Do you oh, know yeah, the bit where yeah. she steals the food and she's giving it out to yeah, all the yeah, kids? Yeah, yeah, he grabs one. Yeah, yeah. I love that bit. Like, yeah, I don't like, know. He says that... Oh, it's, it's, he says it's like a... He says this is like a musical. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, yes. yeah, "What you guys? It's like a musical." <laughs> and then it's really funny. And obviously, it's the first time um, in a Doctor Who episode where Justice wants everybody lives, which is everybody lives. <laughs> Justice this wants one. everybody lives, <laughs> which did just become the norm. Yeah, really. well, actually, that might be true. Have there been any other episodes where everybody lives? No, no, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people. Father's Day, no one died apart from Pete Tyler. Pete Tyler yeah, still he's died. Dead, but he was dead <laughs> at the start. <laughs> I love you. Apart from Pete Tyler, which that it was unavoidable. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they solved it. They just killed him. They killed he him. He killed himself. Suicide was the only way That's out. That's right, yeah. Which is often in Doctor Who. <laughs> you just gotta Actually, kill yourself. You do have yeah. to just kill yourself. But well, yeah, empty child. Just is this once, tight. everybody lives. Eight out of ten, it almost for both feels a little bit. It, I almost feel like it should be a bit higher. I feel but... like we may be underrated these ones. Yeah. Yeah, potentially because we went hot. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did go. Uh, it's uh, at some seasons I think we might be harsher, and some seasons we're lighter. Yeah. Uh, Boomtown. Boom Town. I love Boomtown. <laughs> yeah, that's this is the one. 
this is this is another Slovene episode. It's another Slovene. Two Slovene episodes in what he three. wanted three. Oh, that's <laughs> right, because it's a three two part. And then that's it. They never they come never back again. come back ever again. Ever again. Do they not even show up in like Pandorica? Where there's no, they're aliens. not in Pandorica. They 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 show up. They get mentioned. They do get mentioned. His, the cousin planet from Clom. Oh is, yeah, is mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they don't show up again. But apart Boom, from Sarah Jane Adventures, Boomtown's walk, walk, really walk intimate. Walk me through yeah. why you like Boomtown. I really like how it opens with all of them hanging out in the TARDIS. You got yeah, Jack, Boom, yeah. Rose. Boomtown is really great for a few reasons. One. There's this whole like Mickey is, is as for the first time he's a companion. Yes. Mickey Rose asked Mickey to come all the way to Cardiff to give give her his, her passport, but really it's not actually about that. It's, she just wants to see him again, uh-huh. and then that's when he tells Rose that he starts seeing this girl from a shop. Right. That which really upsets Rose, and then he's like, "Well, what do you want me to do?" So there's this conflict going on. Then, meanwhile, during all of that. The doctor meets like the last survivor of the Slovene two parter, right. yeah. and she's planning to just like blow up the Earth to get a <laughs> lift back to her planet. And then she's just the doctor's like she's just like to the doctor, "You're gonna execute me." Yeah, and she's basically trying becoming more and more human. Basically, is that because she's wearing the skin and interacting she's becoming with people? Because she's yeah, because there's, the there's that scene in the toilet, isn't there? Yeah. Where she's like, where he's about to kill this reporter. Yeah, and then the reporter mentions that she's pregnant, and then she's like, oh. Yeah, and then she's just sitting in the bath in the toilet as a Slovene, being like, <laughs> all so sad. Why yeah. do you go that's away? That's so funny. That's like and that's it's never been done ne- before. You'd never see something yeah. like that in Doctor Who, like yeah. now. Like yeah. it's weird. Like even with the Zygon, they didn't explore yeah. shit like that, which is because it's like a really it's intimate like, way of looking at an alien. It's about to be a classic Doctor Who get murder scene, and then yeah. it just becomes something a lot more than that. It's just a very like Russell's just writing this this episode for the sake of he just so he's much very of, indulgent. So, so much of so much of it is looking at like conventions that you can overturn as well because like a lot of this season is dedicated to like surprising you with what you're used to with Doctor Who and kind of giving that but in a new way and Captain Jack is really good in this as well just as a guy who's there it's really nice to just have him as someone who's there yeah I always wish Captain Jack just travelled with the carried on just being as a guy (laughs) who was there Doctor Who companion because this is the episode where he really feels a bit like a companion from my memory yeah he doesn't really do a whole lot no there's a there's a great like masculinity thing where yeah. they kind of like because the doctor hates men. Well, it's like so Mickey, com- it's like three, Mickey, men three men and Rose. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I really like it. Seven Super. out of ten. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Very strong. And then uh, we've got parting the of the way. We finale. gave that the same as fucking as uh, as Lonely Child. That's yeah. kind of fair. It's pretty no, good. Yeah, that is good. They've got good. the reality TV You've thing. You've got the reality TV thing. The Daleks are really sick in this. Yeah, my favorite. Well. This I is love... like the str- one yeah. of the stronger finales. Yeah, and they don't always. The Emperor the Dalek looks like... sick. It all looks the sick. Daleks the Daleks type. are really good in this. The Daleks yeah. are really like because the Dalek doing one Dalek it, it works or is always better. It's really hard to make a huge amount of Daleks yeah. feel scary, but in this they do. They're like yeah. an unstoppable tide. All of this really really works because it's yeah. set in the same place as as the long game yeah uh and he's made it like this he's yeah. he's part of the reason to blame because he shut everything down uh, and, in and terms of media you know everything's been built up and established for yeah. the for this finale yeah. like it's all consciously placed like you're close to jackie and mickey at this point you understand rose and the doctor you understand uh, captain, captain, captain Jack. jack's yeah. there like you know everyone's there and you really know you what they're all the about the daleks yeah. you get a sense of what they are and what Absolutely, they mean to you, him. and you've seen it's how dangerous one dalek is up, so like once yeah. you've got this swarm of daleks you're just like shit this is fucked and in line with that it has the degree of desperation that it needs like everyone like dies like everyone gets <laughs> It's really it's horribly really fucked. Dark. The because doctor's there's that like, girl who he's quite friendly with. Yeah, and yeah. She just. Oh, that's one that's of the best, the best scenes <laughs> yeah. for a so Dalek. The Dalek just hovers there, and you see the lights flash, and you know it's saying exterminate, but you can't hear because it. it's out in yeah. space and in the back of space, and then it just yeah. breaks the, the and then, glass, and it's yeah. so good. And then there's also a sick scene where. Uh, the ninth doctor thinks that Rose is dead. Yeah. And he gets taken away and he's just speechless, and he gets locked up in the cells, and he's just sitting there, and like he just goes now. Like that <laughs> now, and then Caps and Jack just gets up and yeah. they just break out. It's so and good. And then they just head towards the base, and, and he's just so angry. And then he finds out Rose is dead, is alive, and he's just so happy. I know. The, yeah. w- my one like little, I mean, because we both 
don't really like the fact that Rose and the Doctor make out at the end. <laughs> well, this was the <laughs> thing. It, it wasn't supposed to be like this because yeah. Eccleston wasn't supposed to go. Because when they're doing interviews as as they're filming the first and second block of the show, mm. Russell is saying that he do, he doesn't want to do regeneration. That he doesn't want to do it. Um, yeah. And uh, Eccleston had problems on set, which yeah. he's not allowed to talk about. So we don't know. But it's a real fucking shame because yeah. this is such a good season and is. Eccleston is so good in this it, season. It really is. And it's so sad that it stands, it's just totally on its own. It but would have been so, so nice to see him He was so jilted yeah. by it that he couldn't even come back for the 50th anniversary because yeah. he, he couldn't do that. Well, because there's rumours, because we heard that he'd like been blacklisted from like yeah, UK was, um, stuff, yeah, which is yeah. why he turns up in a bunch of American shit later on, yeah. but you don't see him do that much like UK stuff. Yeah. After the after Doctor Who. It's like our favourite Marvel film, Thor 2. Thor 2. The dark, the dark world, world where he plays the elf, <laughs> the dark elf, who's great. It's sick. <laughs> He's so good in that. Yeah. And if you if you haven't seen Thor <laughs> Two: The and Dark you're a World, Doctor Who fan, just you, Christopher Eccleston's in that. But yeah, this is this is great. It's good finale. though. Yeah, it is really good. really good. And um, it's is 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 a, it, do you know this is one of those really expertly balanced episodes with the. Because the my favorite ep- episodes of Doctor Who are the ones that I think we end up liking the most are the ones which have these dark concepts and yeah. and are dark and the stakes are high, but are are counterbalanced with a sort of campiness and a sort of yeah. goofiness. Also, and this does have that in it with he, the, all the reality TV stuff. Yeah. There's like the Captain oh, yeah. Jack going like, "Oh, you yeah. are the missing link," <laughs> yeah. and he's hiding like a gun in his ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's all of that um, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, and he's in Big Brother. Yeah. It's really good. It's, it's really, really good. good. It's got like I love a bit of that. everything. Subversion stuff. It's yeah. really funny. It's really camp. Uh, and then also, even though Russell was under all this pressure, you know, because Eccleston has to leave, yeah. he still writes such a good ending scene for yeah, Eccleston he does. right uh, before he and regenerates. Eccleston, because Eccleston has, Is in it, my opinion, like the second best regeneration, I yeah. think, because I. <laughs> the, regenerations are weird they've, they've always been hit and miss but Eccleson's was simple like to the point it got you where it, ne- it really needed hit to you in the um, and, then yeah. it ju- and then it goes like, and it's really this, good who's this prick yeah and that's what that's what <laughs> replaces him who's yeah this yeah dickhead? who's this arsehole how <laughs> dare he um and that but that's what's great about this season is it's, I think it's the it feels the most complete out of all the yeah. Doctor Who well, seasons because it's not trying to carry on anything else. Imagine if they didn't have the concept of regeneration and this was just a new show that Russell wanted to make <laughs> and he had these problems. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, this goes to show why, why Re- Doctor Who works so well. It's very adaptable to yeah. real world problems. To real come issues that happen with. on set. That's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame he had to go. So, yeah. our overall rating for this season, this is us calculating all our individual it's episodes. average rating. rating. The average rating of the whole episode is a 7.5 out of 10. Which is good. It's That's the really best good. rating. This is the best it's our rating. highest rating. <laughs> so Doctor Who only gets worse from <laughs> <laughs> it never. But it's still worth watching. It's still but worth it. But it does definitely get worse. First season's sick. First season is yeah. unmatched, really. Yeah. I. Why do you think that is? It's just... It's Consistent The Long Game is good. the only bad episode. Yeah. And it's not even that bad. It's not even that bad. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's all really great. Uh, yeah, and then also, so the regeneration thing. To go back to that, <laughs> I like it. It's a great thing. And he, so he, basically, what happens is Rose absorbs like the yeah. heart of the TARDIS. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then she fucks everything up, brings yeah. Captain Jack back to life. Yeah. He does three seasons of Touchwood. Touchwood. Yeah. Torchwood video coming soon. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> We're gonna redo I'm not all of watching it. Torchwood. But, yeah. And then and the doctor's like, you shouldn't have that, it's burning you up. I yeah. take that energy. So yeah. he takes it up, then he's regenerating, so he <laughs> so oh, all is this the your energy regeneration complaint. So all the energy comes out of him <laughs> yeah. because he's absorbed and the heart. And goes back into the TARDIS. And goes back into the TARDIS. That's why when he regenerates it's like he explodes. Then they fucked it, and I'll explain later why they fuck it. But that he's that, unhappy. Put a about pin it. in this. Okay. Just keep that in your head if yeah. you're listening yeah. to this whole. If you're thing. gonna do the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> good. To, All good right, for let's you. go. Season, Season two. two. David Tennant, Big Boy Malloy. Everyone says he's their favorite. Are they right? I don't know. We're gonna find yeah, out. Let's find out. Um, but yeah, this is Tennant and Rose. Season two. Um, probably my least. <laughs> <laughs> but that, we'll season see. two, yeah, it's actually a lot weaker than everyone thinks. It everyone is. thinks it is. But we'll go through it. Yeah, we are going to go through it. So the first episode of season two is the, the Christmas, Christmas invasion. invasion. What a fucking piss show! I, I, I do not like this episode. It's boring. <laughs> it's really boring. Nothing happens in it. The aliens are 
like boring. <laughs> they're literally like Worf. What's the race of Worf from Star Trek? Klingon. They're Klingons, but less interesting. All right. The doctor's in his PJs the whole way through, so. and when he comes to, all he does is just do all like his standard Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, but that was new back then. Oh, that it was. It standard. wasn't. Eccleston had been doing it. Not as not the not same. in the same, yeah. but similarly. This episode, he comes out. And this just... episode is entirely written to just build up to David Tennant, and he's disappointing. I don't know. I thought I was pretty. I tight. remember when I watched this Christmas Invasion episode as a kid. Mm. I was like bitter. I yeah, didn't like angry, it. Really. Yeah, I, de- I definitely. Because you were still attached to it. No, Eccleston. but I still don't like it. And there's other episodes which I like of Eccleston's, even in this, like later on and everything. But the sort of like the sat, it's too much to me. It's too much like quirk and not enough substance. All right. So what I like about this episode is you get to see David Tennant wearing the leather jacket. And weirdly enough, he looks better in the leather jacket than <laughs> he, he does, does in his actual, actual costume. costume. Especially season you get two one costume. Scene. There was also a scene before this, which was written by Moffat, which was released for Children in Need, which is, is that... just David Tennant with Rose right after he regenerates oh, yeah, in six I've minutes. Seen that. Yeah, I think, I, I think you showed me that. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, and it's really good because uh, it's Moffat's. Like, yeah, Tennant's, really Tennant's a really good actor. Yeah. Like, but that's um, why it's a shame he's so asleep for I most like, of this. I like the blood. The blood thing where they all step on, they're all going to kill themselves because of their blood type. That's very Stephen King esque. Yeah, yeah, no, look, I like that I like, as a concept. It yeah. just doesn't like lead anywhere, really. I, I like the scenes with with the family reacting to Eccles to to the regeneration. Do you like the fact that he all he needed was a cup of tea to wake up? Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on. No, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to defend it, it any longer. Matter, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, are five this, out of ten, baby. This is, I mean, this is an episode I will go softer on. It is really dumb. <laughs> so he, dumb. he fixes, he cures everyone all the with combining all the medicine. But me and Sam really cracked up because this whole episode is all about how there's all these sick people, and the the concept is these sick people have every single disease in the, <laughs> in the world. And he cures them by combining all the medicine. And there's this amazing medicine. scene where he's like, "I'm gonna sort it," <laughs> and he's tearing out all the medicine and pouring it into one vat. <laughs> <laughs> and he just sprays them with it. And they get instantly they cured. cured. Everyone's cured. And the way they cure each other is by hugging each other. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot of dumb and not enough like seriousness yeah, in a way. Yeah. But obviously the feature to this that really like does make this fun to watch. And it is fun to watch. Yeah. Even though it's stupid and doesn't like hold a lot of substance in comparison to a lot of other Doctor Who. Is the body switching. Is the body switching. Yeah. So Cassandra's the villain in this again, who's just like a the bit s- of... She brings sl- back the skin flat woman. Yeah, and um, she starts infecting the mind of the Doctor and the Assistant and switching between them. Yeah, so you get to see David Tennant and Billy Piper pretending to be Cassandra. Uh, who's like this really extreme, yeah. campy character. And, the, the and really, that's very the fun. The cat people really look cool. The cat people I do like look cool. the cat cool. people. But the ca- weren't the cat people... No, the cat people were new to this. They were new. One yeah. of the things that face I... Face of Bo is new as face well. Face of Bo is Also new. known as Captain yeah, Jack Yeah, but face of, face of Bo just doesn't go <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> face of Bo is always just that. <laughs> all right, let's move on. That's enough, I think. No, yeah, it's it's good though. It's um, all right. Oh, well, one of the things I wanted to say was I like the fact that Russell T like establishes his universe in this Doctor Who. The way he does this show running is by revisiting places in con- totally new context. Yeah, because this is the new uh, Earth. Which is because it it's like the, grass. Yeah, yeah, it's the same world as the world that they watched as they watched the world die. It explode. Yeah, and it's like but and it's face further, of O, isn't it? Yeah, he and was it, in the other one. Uh, there yeah. we go. And it's developed from that. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting. It gives the universe a continuity. Yeah, which um is lost I think later on. Like later on it feels much more story based but this yeah. really like made it feel like he was exploring yeah, it was a, reoccurring, a set universe thing. in a way and the villains were like cat people yeah. and Cassandra was a villain yeah. as well like so that so kind of makes all... sense yeah and yeah. it's all it's continuing on it's rewarding I, you I for sticking I also like that it. Cassandra's like not Necess- she's just selfish. She, she isn't like she's she, well because at the end she gets the like cat a, people, a redemption. Yeah, and the she? cat people are like evil because they want to test out new ways to kill and listen, people. That scene where the doctor cures all diseases <laughs> is funny. <laughs> it's funny. It's pretty enjoyable. It's, you can't yeah. say it's boring. No, definitely. Yeah. You should definitely like this. Is one I'd say is even though it's a five out of ten, it's not a five out of ten because it's uninteresting. It's, it's just, a five out of ten because really it's like get you get can't done. say yeah. that it's great. <laughs> but it's definitely worth watching. But in terms of like starting off the new season 
It doesn't warm me up. Tooth and then and Tooth and Claw. Slightly better. Slightly better. I Because <laughs> is... we watched it and we were like quite surprised by yeah. it. It's very different. It's, it looks and feels very different yeah. to Doctor for yeah. all the other Doctor Who stuff there's we've a had lot, before. There's a lot in this that I enjoy. The directing's really the good. The directing's really yeah. good. Tenant, Tenant and Rose's relationship is really fun in yeah, this as well. Yeah, they're just having fun they're the whole time. Really they like don't give a shit. They're really getting kicks out like of it. Stones. Because <laughs> this, is, this is one of the things that's quite nice. It is a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the things that's kind of nice is Tenant and Rose's so playful uh during their run of doctor who with each other and like they they just seem to be taking pleasure from it they're kind of like distant from yeah. all the events that are yeah, taking yeah, place they're like in a bubble yeah and that's really good i like that and then there's that really good scene in doctor who where he just licks everything to figure out where they're going oh yeah he licks the woods <laughs> he to licks... realize what kind of wood it is he licks the entire and the queen place. victoria is quite good Hang in on. it what Oh, okay. Do you want to pause it? Mm. Uh, we might as well just keep running. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Recording for 35 minutes. There we go. We're in, we're in season mm. two. It's fine. But it's fine. We've only oh, got we another Billy's gonna be. five hours. Four years. <laughs> just you nattering on until you're fucking zombified. <laughs> After this season, we'll take a bit of a break. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Which is for a Siggy. And I'll, yeah, re- I'll yeah. renew our teas. All right, good. I think it's going well, though. I'm enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's quite really cathartic. Good fun, it yeah. feels really cathartic. We needed to do this. Yeah. This is something we needed to do. <laughs> Get out of our system. I don't know if anyone's going to be entertained by it, but fuck them. Fuck them, yeah. <laughs> we'll like it. Yeah. And we'll like that we have this out there. <laughs> and some people will watch it. <laughs> At least one person. Some people will sit through the whole thing. Yeah, some people will, you know. Absolutely. I reckon quite a few. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. No, I think it's good, you know. Yeah. You're coming out with lots of good tidbits. Am I? Yeah, definitely. It's because I'm a huge nerd. See you later. See you later. Could you close the the living room door, actually? Uh, But yeah, just give me two seconds. Yeah. 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 Just we'll be done by then. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. If season one takes half an hour, we won't be done by then. No. We're going to be done by like 12. <laughs> Midnight. <laughs> we won't be done by 12. We'll be finished at like. It will take another three hours. Yeah. Because the best thing to do is just enjoy it. Yeah. Because I think this is it. It's our catharsis for all the stuff we've been thinking and knowing yeah. about Doctor Who. We just need to take every moment we take, every time we ever thought, take it. Jump Do we cut. restart it? Nah. Jump oh. cut. Big sorry. boy. But yeah. Two anyway, things. Okay. Sorry, our, our roommate good. was moving out. He was tired of Doctor. He yeah. needed to go out. He just he left. He packed his bags and left. Uh, Queen Victoria is good in this. Yeah. The relationship is the gag where they keep on trying to get Queen Victoria to, to say, say her I, thing. To like, say I am not amused. Yeah. <laughs> I am not amused. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This is this was a weird episode. It wasn't written by any. It was a, written by someone who didn't write any other ones. I think. Really? So, yeah. I'm not sure. Mm. But it's very different. It's tonally very you, dark. Yeah. Because it's like a say. It's very gothic. It's super gothic and satanic. I really. I, you know, I, it I don't like how quite, it starts, but it later doesn't on. quite fit in with the season. It's very much the black sheep of, yeah. of the season, but the I really historicals like it. often are. The but special yeah, effects are good as well, and the, the actor who plays the werewolf, the werewolf, the werewolf yeah. comes out well. And like the werewolf as well is filmed and yeah. portrayed in a way where he does feel quite imposing and yeah. threatening, yeah, like yeah. in a way that like later on Daleks weren't able to or stuff like that. This yeah. the werewolf actually feels like a, a stronger threat. It's and a, I think the whole mystery with the diamond and stuff, yeah. all the prop stuff, is yeah, all fun. Yeah. And then yeah, the Doctor just licking a an entire library yeah. to figure out all the stuff yeah. good shit man yeah, yeah definitely six, six out, out of ten, ten. it definitely yeah. is a six out of ten yeah. and worth a watch what's next school, school reunion, reunion. Wow. we gave it a seven <laughs> yeah well do you right. think it should have been lower or higher no, I think it's good it's I decent feel, I feel like it's as good as Tooth and Claw 
Yeah, it, yeah. Really? No, yeah. I think it's a bit better. The Sarah, oh, Sarah the Jane, villain is quite s- good. Villain's Who, what's good. his name? Oh, it's that, but he's a good actor. You he's have Shakespeare. Yeah. Isn't there that really good scene where they're, like, it's the doctor and that guy like, yeah, f- across each other on a pool. swimming pool yeah. and they're really like, well lit up. And then Rose being like a cafeteria lady yeah, yeah. serving up the she doctor's a teacher. In the it doctor's as well. a teacher, which is always yeah. quite fun. Uh, yeah, Tennant should be with kids a bit more often because yeah. he is actually really great. He is good with kids, yeah. Yeah, K9's funny. He's great to do the callback. It really it's yeah. really and great Sarah, to have Sarah and Rose like talking about how they're different and yeah. then Mickey's like I'm the tin dog uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and the way that because it's playing with the conventions it's looking yeah. at the conventions in classic movie, the way Sarah Jane is reinterpreted in, into this world really and her relationship sense. with Tenon yeah. feels really like strong and believable yeah. and again it's like it, you don't I would love to have seen her with classic. Capaldi oh. it's a shame she died Rest in peace, Elizabeth Slater. R.I.P. Yeah. But yeah, and then also it went on to Sarah Jane Chronicles, which is not bad either. Yeah. It's actually it's, half it's, decent. It's pr- this episode's good. Yeah. It, although it's the one I have one of the least urges to revisit yeah, every time I watch it. But then it's always the one which, if I do end up watching, I'm like, ah, it's all right, actually. Yeah, yeah. I should not rate it so severely. It's just the, so the, the villains are a bit shit. Really. The bat things. Yeah. It's the design that lets them down less than the yeah. actual like concept yeah, of them, that's, though. Yeah, because that's dated. That looks a bit That trash. does look yeah. trash. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I think the Set, set the setting feels all a bit yeah. flat as well. The yeah. whole school location. It's not very filmic in no. places. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you were going to have all these alien teachers, uh, there's just a slight bit more you could do with it. Yeah. I think. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But it, it's good. It's well balanced, and I yeah. think it's got a good mass if it, appeal. If Sarah it's Jane like, wasn't in it, it would be a four out of ten. Yeah. Well, no, it'd be like a six or a five if Sarah Jane wasn't in it. It All wouldn't right. be a four. Maybe a it's five. not bad. Yeah. Like again, like the guy who plays the main villain is actually really good. And yeah, he is good. Yeah. And the teachers and the bit and they're eating kids. No, they're not eating kids. No, they're, you just want them to I eat want the them kids because that kids. would make more sense. They sense. should be eating. They're trying kids. to get them to be smart to, to be smart do something. To do so- yeah, yeah, that is dumb. Moving yeah. on. But seven out of ten, it is good. Right. It is, Move. and it feels special. Get on the fireplace. I love this one. Yeah, I don't love it. I think it's good, though. I think it is good. I can't argue against that. The alien stuff is really good. It's it, The romance stuff feels a little bit too, like, conventional and, like, hyper-played out, especially for Doctor Who. I always get uncomfortable when the Doctor Who's getting romantic with someone anyway because I'm like, bruv, you're 900 years <laughs> old. Like, that is shady. That is weird. Yeah. But whatever. Like, okay, yeah, it's just a shit. It's just a TV well, show. It's not too romantic. I don't know. It's, it's just a... Moffat writing women, though. Yeah. It's the way he writes her. She's so um, she's she just... so like ad- adulated. I met loves you as a kid, yeah. and now I want to fuck you. That's yeah. weird. That's a bit unhappy. But the clockwork people, the clockwork are, people sick. are sick. The sets are really the great. Are the the doctor story. pretending to be drunk is yeah. fun. Yeah, and talking about the encore. It's Moffat yeah. taking the piss out of Russell, I think. Really? Yeah, because Rose is like, they used to call him the oncoming storm. Mm. She heard that, I think... He said that in mm. his when he was talking to the Daleks, he's like, "Do you know what they called me? Yeah, the time yeah. of the oncoming storm." And then Moffat goes and has a little crack at him <laughs> and her takes the piss out of him. <laughs> and, like Russell, like doesn't care because it's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Russell doesn't so take. So they've always seriously. had this little bit of like rivalry, and I yeah. think that's what really like. No, makes this is that, this that is good. Scene really funny. This is good, and and I mean the be- one of the best things is always time play. The time yeah. play stuff, and this is good. Yeah. It's a bit harder to watch, I think, with like Amy Pond season in mind. Yeah, because. But, but Moffat because just, re- just re- he did just that, ripped off himself. Which like yeah. I I get why because it's a good idea, but obviously it's done a bit better in the Amy Pond thing. But yeah. I still think this is like it's that st- starting point. I, and still, it is good. I still think it's like the best episode in the season so far. Yeah, I would. It say. very well might maybe be. in the entire bloody thing actually. Yeah, so. no, I think it gets better. I, I don't know, we'll have to see because I can't, see. I can't even remember it now. I've been working on this presentation for so long. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it. 7 out of 10 is fair and it is good. And yeah. and the, the whole twist with the aliens is really Costumes cool. Costumes are great. Too. Costumes yeah. are great. Rise of the Cybermen, Age, Age of Steel. Steel. 13, 13 out of 20. So one's a 6, one's a 7. Yes, yeah. that's right. Mickey Ricky. Which Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm Ricky. But I'm Mickey. Oh! I'm London's most wanted yeah. for parking tickets. That's right. Oh, <laughs> I parked my car in the wrong place. So this is a... Uh, yeah, Ricky's dead. We don't, we don't feel very fondly about this two-party, oh, even though it's not bad. The Cybermen look... All the Cybermen look great. The music for the Cybermen are really, really sick. Good. The origin makes so much sense. Yeah. The parallel world is so cool. Yeah. Yet somehow it's boring. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out bit. why it's boring. And I think it's just... It's not that boring. We did give it a six and a seven. Like, yeah. it's, it does keep you... It's just... It could be better for yeah. a Cyber I think, episode. Do you know what I think its problem is? is it feels... 
If, if it's it feels a bit weirdly too long. 90s. Yeah. We're a hacker group and yeah. we're sort of we're revolutionaries. And it's got all that ju- 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 running yeah, to yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of music. And it's got a lot of that and it is really heavy. It I feels just, really yeah. action I just wish they'd let. I mean, the whole parallel universe thing would have probably been better off as a different episode yeah. and if they just landed on the cyber planet and yeah all human also race, you know i do have bit. the issue this is just the issue with like all of who are the cybermen and at that at this point i will just i do judge cybermen on a different criteria but it's always a part of me where i do just want the cybermen to be like these cybermen were the closest to it but i want i really wish there was more of that the, again this was the closest they got but cybermen slowly and slowly keep distancing away from the fact that these they're organic humans yeah and that they're interested in conversion because <laughs> even these cybermen go around just killing people and that doesn't differentiate them that far from the daleks they are like you know converting a lot of people in this one but they they just kill a lot as well yeah, i and just it, and it, yeah. it doesn't feel like it plays into the unique selling points of what the cybermen can be all the time I think as well because it, it because Lumic, the guy who makes the Cybermen, is like dying, which is quite cool. Yeah. Quite a fan of that. Yeah. Uh, but then it's like he goes from like AirPods to full metal. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's no like, there's no, none of, there isn't that like kind of, it doesn't really make sense. And then he just decides to fully just kill but there everyone. Is, there is some, there is some good moments in this as well. I think which is what makes us put it above and put it, put it up because there's a scene where they all start feeling emotions. Yeah. There's that scene where she's, it's the side man's remembering that she was about to get married. Yeah, she's not she's, supposed to see my face before the wedding. Yeah, and that's pretty fucked. Yeah, and that that's good. And yeah. that kind of dark twistedness. I is mean, really it's like yeah, special. the two two Mickey's is quite funny. It is it's funny. F- it's goofy. It but is funny. goofy. I just yeah, I just. So Cybermen are great, but like they they look great and it establishes them in a good way as well. Yeah, and they yeah. they fit so in the world. It, it's just it could have been it could have been better. It could have been <laughs> less nineties. <laughs> do 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 do. We're hacker people, and the ending yeah. isn't that isn't then just them putting a code in that destroys yes, everything. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes them all emotionally. emotionally it makes them all things. realize they go. They look in the mirror and they go. Yeah, but why would you even have that? Why would you? Even have that? Oh yeah, because there's motion suppressors. Yeah, and then their and heads explode because they can't take oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in fact just were conscious they were like oh. and they're like no I quite like being a Cyberman actually Die. I feel good like this they got little guns as well no it's so. the electric hands they oh, it's just the, the guns, they don't yeah. have the guns yet they're no, just electric they're just electrocute people. people by touching the them. voices are alright but the it's by the good. same guy who does the voice of the Daleks so it's kind of like I like brilliant. it <laughs> it's like um, it reminds it's a, it's a bit of a throwback to like the older ones because yeah. le- it's way better than like classic who Peter Davison <laughs> Cyberman hello <laughs> we are the Cybermen aha we are without feeling. <laughs> and it's like you can see their human mouths, which are painted silver, like moving. We have two goals in life. One, to convert everyone into Cybermen. Two, to take over the world. And three, to have more digital Go- world. Uh, we have three. <laughs> their, we- their weakness is gold. They're yeah. all like, is that gold? <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's right. uh, so this but is better than yeah, that. Like, it's, a bit, it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking cool. Like, yeah. check out. I think it's oh, worth yeah, watching. Um, Rose's mum is a bitch in this. And Rose, oh, nice. I do like yeah. the weird stuff where they're all living together, yeah. and there's the dad and the mum, yeah. and Rose is kind of meeting them, yeah. and she's seeing them married it's, together. It's, like, it's weird. It's funny talking to you. It's like, t- are we family? Yeah, family <laughs> it's a bit something. on the nose. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and, it's, and then Rose is just like. They've called their dog Rose. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, and and David Tennant like Mickey's like, you're not gonna go after me, are you? You didn't ask me about my life. <laughs> oh yeah, he gets all. Uh, and he's like, I told you to fix that carpet. Yeah, yeah anyway, like, that's well, yeah, it's all right. Fun. Yeah, fuck it. Oh, oh dude, Mark Gatiss comes out and. Actually, us do you know, I think you, you like this episode less than me. Mm. I don't think I mind it as much as you. I don't think it's great. Uh, uh, either but there are like <laughs> there's one really good scene there's a, the scene where they like call out that like sexist guy together mm. by pretending they work for the queen i quite enjoyed yeah because there's okay so there's one guy who's just an asshole and he's just like listen i don't think so very much <laughs> and i'm not i am talking and then David Tennant yeah. is like, I'm not listening. Yeah, yeah. You're a fat, <laughs> pathetic loser. And he's like, That's and right. he we, gets you're it. just, you don't do anything. Yeah, I think David Tennant is, David, the 10th Doctor is instrumental to making the mum divorce him. In this mm-hmm. <laughs> because that's how it ends. He that's gets right. a divorce and he moves out. The Doctor yeah. makes that my, woman divorce. Yeah, my, well, this is set, it's set 
in the 60s, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. during the Queen's inauguration, yeah. Yeah. where everyone first has a TV. Yeah, it, it's a pretty good setting. I, I really it's like quite, the scene. Good. There's a detective in the scene, and it starts off where he's, he comes over and he goes, right, tell me everything you know to David Tennant. And then yeah. like within like a minute, it shifts over to David Tennant standing up, him sitting down and yeah. him going, right, tell me everything you know. Yeah, and, and that's a really well-constructed scene. I swear, like, it's a lot of it's, like, on location. I swear it's, it seems like they're filming on an actual yeah. street at one yeah. point, so that I, looks good. It's just, There's the scene as well. The scene that I really like is when they go into that dark place, the Doctor's using his sonic as, like, a torch, Yeah. Um, and they find all the faceless people in yeah. a cage, and yeah. that's quite disturbing. Yeah. The, the, basically, the problem I have with this is that, like, it's not quite scary enough. Mm. And it's not quite funny. Tonally, and it's a bit slow. Yeah, tonally, it's in a very weird place. Yeah. Because if you look at the Dickens one, which Mark Gatiss wrote, that's very funny. Yeah. And it's very, like, playful and goofy. But it does have those, those dark bits, moments. Yeah. And this one, it's it doesn't quite work no. as well. Um, no, I think yeah. you're right, yeah. yeah. Four out of ten, isn't four it? It is a four out of ten, so. So, yeah. So, moving Probably on to it. Impossible hey! Planet Satan Pit. I like this Matt one. Matt Jones I think here. this is one of the most unique two His only Doctor Who episodes. Yeah. Um, what, it's weird that he got a two-parter and then just didn't write anymore. It's just... it's yeah. it's. I, I can understand it, though, because there's no other episode that feels like So this is this the one. introduction to our favourite new Who villain of all time. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> we do love we the We love Ood. the Ood. We do love the Ood. We are the, the only same. iconic people from... Rusty apart from Zero. the Weeping no, Angels. And the Slitheen. <laughs> the Slitheen are iconic. Everyone remembers the Slitheen. Well, maybe, but I, the Ood have been brought back. The Ood Slitheen have been, haven't look, been brought not back. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. The Ood are definitely iconic. They're so great. They looking. are really They're fantastic. Amazing. They're really yeah. great aliens. Yeah. Um, and as a concept, just as it's like a slave race and how they develop later on, it gets a bit weird and hard to follow, <laughs> maybe. But they are know, really We're cool. a bit biased to this, these two episodes because we just like really enjoy them. But yeah. like, they are goofy. No. There's a guy with all this shit on I his mean, face. I mean, like, oh! as a concept, though, it's just one of the more unique feeling yeah, Doctor Who it's, episodes. It's, There's it's a bunch of interesting shit because he gets distance from his TARDIS. Him and Rose have that conversation about like living together, yeah. which is really interesting. I like that scene, yeah. yeah. And they're lying down and it's actually yeah. like, well, it's a they're good... Not lying, they're just sitting opposite each other. But yeah. oh shit, sorry, it's okay. Fuck, I've really embarrassed myself. Good. I know more about who than you. Yeah, that's right. I, so I got you. I read the books. <laughs> uh, but they're talking about in like, the novelization. <laughs> <laughs> they were lying down, in fact. Uh, but there's that, and her relationship with Tenon is really nice in this. There's the Tenon going down into Satan pit, and I just love the like religious undertones of this. Yeah, it makes it feel large. It's definitely. As well. My favorite Doctor stuck in a base episode. Because I th yes, I think this might be the best episodes from this season. Mm. I, 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 I like Girl in the Fireplace a bit more. Yeah, yeah. This one's like darker. It's like I don't know. It's like it, I don't know. Just Girl in the Fireplace is just like it's just a bit tidier. Because how does it end? Doesn't it end with like them <laughs> kamikazeing themselves with the, it, with the Satan? No, board? it doesn't. It's really complicated. Oh. Basically, like, say yeah, Satan knows that like they're gonna go back to Earth, and then they like he possesses someone. It's yeah, like a, yeah, it's like a possession thing, and then like they actually go like, no, actually we're gonna kill ourselves. And yes, that's when Satan like goes. And then <laughs> somehow they survive. I don't know how. But yeah. Great. But it's really good. 14 out of 10. Yeah. 14 out of 20. It's not 14 out of 10. Like, if you're used to Doctor Who and you see these, it's a pleasant surprise. It is. Yeah. And it's underrated. Season, it is underrated. Yeah. And it's unique. And there's a lot of, like, fun alien stuff. The and Ood. Satan's in it. And what Satan's more do you in want? it. Ood and, and Satan. Doctor Who facing off against Satan does not look good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does not uh, hold up at all. Uh, but I like okay. it. You like it? Yeah, I like the design. With the giant. I like the little bits of, like, thing in his mouth. Like, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's all. It's whatever. Oh, oh shit. shit. I went back. How do I go back? Love, Love and, and monsters. monsters. I think we underrated so this. So the guy who came up with the Absorber Loft is now a YouTuber. Oh, yeah. He does Doctor Who videos. Oh, yeah. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. What's his channel name? I don't know. Absorber Loft guy. Absorber Loft guy. <laughs> What's going on? I'm Absorber Loft guy. and monsters. I like this one. Yeah. Do you know what? We. I don't think we would have... I think we caved into like general peer pressure when we put four yeah. <laughs> I think it's like a six. Oh, wait. 
It's definitely not a six. <laughs> on a ca- it's either a one or a six. <laughs> it's either a one or a ten. <laughs> because I'm enjoying it because it's really, really dark. It's so bad, it's but good, yeah. I, I love, I think... It's the just mo- basically a, a fan... It's yeah. an episode about Doctor Who fans. fans. But yeah. it's not even nice to them. Yeah. Like, the guy ends up dating his girlfriend. It does a, a slab, of, a concrete. slab <laughs> of concrete with her face on it. She looks Ursula. gross. Yeah, because they set up all these, like, quite sweet characters. It's yeah. characters and Cecil does it there. But then they build up a friendship. Then they come into contact with the Doctor and they all die. It's just the <laughs> fact that it's just like, and that's when it all changed. <laughs> yes. Peter K came in <laughs> and he K. made us work like dogs. Yeah, and they're all adults. He's like, come on then. Yeah, and they're all, all like, trying to track down the dog. Like, what? Don't they have jobs? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. And then there's the whole thing of him trying to seduce Jackie Tyler. <laughs> oh, yeah. He tries to seduce Jackie <laughs> Tyler. That's weird. And that's when I found it a picture of my daughter. <laughs> it's never about me. It's never about me. He's like, me. no way, Jackie. I do really like you. I do, even like though you're you a lot know. older it's than very me. So and I'm in pop. love with Ursula. It's very soap opera. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really enough. soapy. No, because him and Jackie really sort like... of become friends. It's all about okay. friendship. What I like about this is I really like that we get to see the Doctor and Rose from like the third person point perspective. Yes, where you see them like running around with the bucket, Which doesn't... Scooby Doo yeah. running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Chasing like... after the monster. Yeah. Um, and the Absorbaloff is a good villain. The I, Absorbaloff I, is <laughs> it's all coming like out. No one's going to judge back. our opinions and sound anymore. We're doing a character. Oh, yeah, yeah, these aren't our we're actual we're opinions. <laughs> yeah, these yeah, are just so I forgot. No, um, I like. I like. Look, I think it can be done well. The idea that like the guy absorbs fuck you, you into I his wouldn't. Skin. <laughs> look, I don't want this changed. Yeah, I like it as a, I love it with the weird concrete girlfriend. <laughs> I love that this sh- this show kills like every they character. Make a band. They make a they band. They do truck. They make they truck. Do they truck. do a truck band. <laughs> Time Lord Rock. We and are Chameleon Cherkit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're Chameleon <laughs> Cherkit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I like yeah, I think it's really weird that it's like this wholesome episode. <laughs> oh, I really based like around the- a fan's design and. Every, like, yeah. I, it's so weird. A blue Peter like blue competition. Peter competition. Yeah. And they kill off every character yeah. that represents the fan base yeah. except for him. And then he ends up dating a concrete slab. Russell like, just what didn't is give that? a shit. No one gave a shit. Yeah. But I think that's I part really of the I really like the chunk. flashbacks where it's like first person perspective yeah. of Elton as a kid. Yeah. And he's like, then that's when I remembered it. That was the night my mother died. Yeah. Like, how could you forget that? It's all a bit <laughs> weird. <laughs> how did you forget like, that? This is like, if on terms of the camp and dark scale this is like full camp yeah um but i think i like it for that it's got it's got soul like it's one of the episodes that I, it has it's, it's got, got heart to it's it got, it's got it's one it's of got the, soul it's one of the episodes i'd be more likely to revisit from yeah. this season i yeah. think and just because i'm like love and monsters is so dumb yeah like, with a cone way. you'll be happy with a cone with a traffic cone yeah. you'll be fine you'll be absolutely uh, happy so in that case yeah four out of ten is probably fair it's probably fair yeah yeah or a six or a one <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Fear. Fear her. Uh, we gave it a two. You gave it a two, yeah. Why me? Why? You, what? It's all on you. <laughs> I think it's a three. You think it's a three? Yeah, I think that's a bit harsh. Well, because of how Tennant's behaving. Ten- yeah. So basically, Tennant is the guy who wrote this episode. Um, is a showrunner for another show. Um, and it's he basically has written the Doctor as like a Tom Baker kind of top like Colin Baker, like Tom Baker, like very alien doctor um, who's doing weird shit. Like, Which isn't what Tennant usually like, is like. Yeah, yeah, like he's like feeling the energy. <laughs> and like Rose is like, all these people are missing. And David Tennant's like, who cares? And like rocks away. <laughs> and then he's like, what game is this? And he's like, I like squash. Uh, snakes yeah. and ladders. Snakes and ladders. And then he's like, oh, actually, I'm being uh, facetious. Yeah, which like, isn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes in and he just puts his finger in and like some, some jam. marmalade. Yeah. And just like. Mm. Yeah. So like he's written really weirdly. And I, fi- I find that quite well, entertaining. The scribbles. And then, the, and then there's all the stuff with Chloe Webber. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chloe Webber. I was alone. I give you friends, and you're still unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and the mum's like, I try talking to her, but she just shuts me out. Yeah, she's like so bad as a mum. She's God. just like, she's like, yeah, I try my best, and it's like, <laughs> your daughter's like clearly like it does, it does, it does just, it does, it's just a weird. Yeah, one. she's like, stay away. Because maybe this is the black sheep. <laughs> no, this one is like, it looks like a Doctor Who episode. It feels like one as well. 
Um, yeah, Ro- Rose is like pretty good in this. I don't know. It's it's not good. This episode, <laughs> skip it, skip it. It skip doesn't it. matter. It doesn't you, matter. No one's gonna watch this no one, one again. Watch it. I'm, I'm gonna go Doomsday. Doomsday. We got into real conflict about this. We one. did. We argued this one because I really good. like this, and I <laughs> <laughs> listen. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. But I don't really think it's that good of a Doctor <laughs> finale, really. I think it's like overly. I think the Rose <laughs> Tenant stuff is all. It's all again playing on that thing of like the Doctor's really old anyway, and the weird romance between him and Rose, <clears throat> which I don't think ever felt very compatible with Mickey being a present character either. No, Mickey's gone. Mickey went. Yeah, I know. Mickey, Mickey went. went gay. He didn't go gay. Yeah, because there's a guy from fucking... He ends up with Martha Jones, you bloody (laughs) Doctor Who idiot. No, I know, but he goes gay for a bit because there's a guy who's like a CBBC presenter. Um, He was a CBBC presenter at the time, but then he was in Doctor Who. He was the guy who was best friends with Ricky. Uh, and then Ricky died, and then him and Mickey. And oh, it just ends drive with them. off. Yeah, yeah. And it ends with them in the van. It's like, well then, let's go. And they look at each other really homoerotically, and I think that's when he. Okay, so my problem with this episode really is like the tension and the stakes don't actually feel that high. You've got Cybermen v Daleks, and like most of it, mo- most of that is sidelined for the for the relationship between T- Tenon and Rose and it's always them chasing and trying to get back to each other and then she leaves it's, it's and it's very very back. dramatic it is dramatic. quite straight back and like actually like the best and most interesting part of this and the reason is we rate it highly is because it's Cybermen v Daleks <laughs> that is why yeah but, and that's sick but it's it's never really done no, to I the best like extent. I quite like the first part, and I don't like the fa- I don't like the fact that the Daleks go around killing every all the Cybermen really easily as well. It well, it's the only way you could write it. Yeah, all right, but I would have liked one of the Daleks to be like fucked up by some Cybermen. And to me, this is the ultimate MacGuffin solution, Doctor Who episode, where it's like, it feels so hokey how he like saves the day. I don't know. Look, there's timey wimey space dust on everyone. I've been seeing it with my 3D glasses. Oh. Now I can use it. Everyone who's wearing that gets sucked into the portal, but people who aren't don't. Yeah, okay, well, listen. <laughs> Cybermen versus Daleks. You've got the David Tennant walking around with Jackie Tyler being like, this is Rose. She fell into the fountain of aging, <laughs> age 40 years. Um, he's walking around with her. You've got like the whole like Torchwood Institute, like that's yeah, quite cool. It's not... Though it's weird because then he brings a unit, so like I don't know how those correlate together. <laughs> like, but it doesn't matter. Uh, There's then... only one scene that I really, really enjoy from this two parter, and it's the Cybermen and Daleks having an argument yeah, over who looks that's better. Good. That's very good. Okay, and I enjoy that. Yeah. And it is good. It's fun. I, I don't. I really just think the whole it. thing is like quite pacey. Uh, yeah, I just don't think the, the scene, payoff is strong enough. It's just pretty well written, like in terms of the scenes, um, and it feels large in scale, uh, which it does is what feel you want in a finale. Scale. It does like, feel large in scale, but also it doesn't feel pit- much. It feels very only slightly larger than the last finale. And with it's Eccleston. a really good send off for Rose, actually, uh, and the performances yeah, are really it, good. It's lessened by the fact that she does come back. <laughs> We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's good though. I like, and I, I, like look, the, I think everyone should watch it. And I think yeah. if you like Doctor Who, you like Daleks and Cybermen, yeah. then you will like it. And I do like it. I just don't think it's I, like fantastic. I like the, as well as a black Dalek, Dalek sec. I like the fact there's. Like, I like the cult of Scarra the cult as of a whole. Scarra they're are cool. really cool. They're but I think they're this. better like in their later episodes. And there's a really good scene with with like Tenant like interacting with them. Uh, when yeah. he first meets them, uh, I you know it's, it's all it's all cool. I I like it. Oh, do you know also? Uh, the, but the problem is, is like the Daleks feel slightly less threatening in this as well. And this was the point where actually I think like Daleks Daleks have been used lots. Hordes of Daleks by this point. We'd had Dalek, the finale, the two parts of finale with Eccleston, um, and then you have this as well. So you have so many hordes of Daleks. It did feel. Slightly delegitimate. It didn't. It didn't feel as like oh, as yeah. high you know, as I thought it yeah, should have been, know, even when I saw it when I was young. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I feel like the the prison ship filled with all the Daleks was maybe a bit too much. I think that's really when it sort of it sort of became a bit too because they demonstrate that those four Daleks on their own were enough to take over the planet. Mm. So a prison ship full of them, only then like five minutes later they all get sucked in. <laughs> it's just kind of like. 
when we've got this massive army of Cybermen, it feels a bit yeah. weird. Yeah. Um. I. I. But the sphere opening and yeah. the dialects coming out is probably the best cliffhanger. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. That's a great cliffhanger, yeah. no doubt. It's once it starts really indulging you yeah. with all the dialogue. And I think overrating this up... episode makes it fair for slightly underrating Fear Her. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. It balances that out. Anyway, let's sure, get down the to fin- it. Final rating of season two of Tenant's Doctor Who. 5.7. So not 10. very high. Didn't even it's hit nearly a six. A six. It's nearly ne- a six. Nearly a six. It's... So, yeah, considering that Tenant is everyone's favourite, it's weird that when we go through it episode by episode, quite a lot of duds, really. Quite a lot well, of it's not episodes. even duds. It's middling ones that yeah. are slightly lower down because this doesn't have any ones in it. It doesn't. It has a two. Yeah. But other than that, it's like all. It's, it's all, all okay. All right. Yeah. But th- this is the thing: is like Russell T is like consistent, but it, apart from there's the next like season, little niggly problems the, the, with yeah. every episode. Yeah, yeah. and it, it never fi- it never feels like it fully reaches its stride. And it doesn't feel like it, it builds up to something as, as complete, maybe, as yeah. the... Because they do set up the parallel universe stuff and things like that. But that feels like it was ending a lot of things. And then it, when they... Because it feels like it's ending Mickey's yeah. arc and it's yeah. ending the arc yeah. of the father a bit. Everyone moves on. So and when it all like comes back... bring it back. Yeah. It, it doesn't... It feels... Oh, that feels a bit uncomfortable yeah. in a way. Because they're not present. Also, I find it really weird that Mickey lives... <laughs> in the parallel... <laughs> with Rose... It's like Mickey, Rose, and her parents. Don't they all like live together? Oh, well, do they all just leave? I don't know if Mickey's go there. Go to the mansion. Is and, he there on the and, beach and, and, at the and, end? I, actually, it? I do have to say, like, the send off with Rose. Because, like, you look at that tenant regeneration scene, and it says a lot with very little. It's, like, very, like, minimalist, but it's so impactful, and it's nice, and it's right. And it would have been, it would have been nice if, like, Eccleston and Rose had something a little bit more like that as opposed to something that veered so you much into Tenant and Rose. Uh, Tenant and Rose, sorry. Yeah. Had something like that as opposed to something that leaned so heavily into like the mel- melodrama of it. Yeah. Maybe. For yeah. me, for me, personally. Well, yeah. I and mean, I can understand why people would like that. Yeah. This this season's just a bit, it's just a bit miserly. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, there's fun moments. So yeah, the only episode in here that I would say to check out Satan Pit two parter. Satan Pit two parter. And the girl in the fireplace. And, and probably the Daleks v Cybermen two parter. Because that. because if it, you want if that, you want yeah. that. If, Which, you want that. if you like Doctor Who, you should want yeah, that. Yeah, if you want to see Rose's ends as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all the other ones just don't even You can don't even go there. Yeah. I mean Cybermen, you, uh, if you want to see the Cybermen. You could watch you could so you could conceivably kind of watch all of it yeah. as well. But apart from the really low let rate. You might ones. get a bit bored. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it it feels a bit more dated than the Eccleston stuff in yeah, a way. To it does. Me. Um should we go on? Should we take a break? Okay. We're back. Season three. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Jones, Martha baby. Jones. We've got rid of Rose Tyler now. She's out of that. She's out of here. And, and now this is when David Tennant comes into his own. I think a little bit more. Yeah. I think he feels more defined as a doctor, as yeah. a character in this. Yeah. Um, he feels less like a sort of continuation of Eccleston, and feels like more like this weird, more erratic. Uh, there's this whole thing more with him sexual. being sexual. He's much more sexual, much <laughs> more seductive. Fucking deviant. They love playing off of Tennant just being like a seducive man. They did yeah. it in the, in the season with Rose as well. But yeah, more so in this. In this. Martha's just hopelessly in love with him. So in and love it's so with pathetic because she's trying, she's pretending not to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. She's like, oh, is this what you do? You travel all this way just to take me on a date? And he's like, and then she's like, well, I'm not interested. Yeah, and that's like, right. Oh, great. And, and then her face <laughs> drops. <laughs> she's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Anyway, yeah, let's go Dogs on. Dogs is going to stop regenerating into attractive men. <laughs> the Runaway, runaway bride. bride. Five out of ten. Oh. I love Catherine Tate in this. Cath- look, I like Catherine Tate all the time. She's always good when she's in Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, this episode's a bit of a nothing. <laughs> it's a bit of a nothing. You have the Doctor Who doing his thing, um, and it's just a Doctor Who thing, and he's figuring it out. And Do- Catherine Tate comes onto his TARDIS, and it's all like, okay, cool, you're running with it. There's a pretty, there's it's a, a pretty... real good dynamic between the two because yeah. she feels like he's kidnapped her. Yeah, and that's, that's really funny. funny. And he's really freaked out yeah. by by her as yeah. well, by Donna. <laughs> like, he just gets to be really alien. Yes, as well. he comes off really oddly. And in there's this. a car chase with the TARDIS. That's right. I was gonna say the car chase with the TARDIS is pretty good, where yeah. he's trying to get her on. And he's like, trust me, just trust my me. My friend Rose, yeah. she's she's alive. <laughs> she's so alive. He's so Come insane. on. 
one. He's so off on one. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> and then there's some really good moments with Donna as a character in this. Yeah, where it cuts to flashbacks where she's like, oh, please, yeah. come on, marry me. And he's like, the, no. The, one, the scene where they all enter into her wedding bit and yeah. then does she pretends to cry and yeah, then she like yeah, winks yeah, at the doctor yeah. and stuff. I don't know. Donna's such an interesting character in Doctor Who because she was so like a new way of like interpreting a companion. She's such a different kind of companion. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. she's not the companion for this season. No. Uh, but Runaway Bride is all right. And then really out of nowhere, and it seems a bit weird, <laughs> he kills the alien woman. He's like, oh, no, wait, he's hang saying... on. We're going to talk about the fact that she's a giant spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, Doctor! So you! One, of the, one of the things I like, I like her costume, and I love her performance of the spider. Yeah, the costume so is hammy, great, yeah. And it looks good. She's good. She, she should is, be in more she, <laughs> The way she performs this, well, they do bring her back. This <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they bring her back. She no, comes no. back. The the scene where she I don't know. <laughs> uh no, the or the way she's performing it, you can tell the actor's having lots of fun with yeah, playing the character. Being the giant spider. Being the yeah. giant spider villain. But the doctor deciding to kill her and doing that whole no second chances thing, which I swear is a constant thing with... Because we have that in his Christmas Invasion episode, he it's kills the, the guy. It's always the Christmas episode. he's like, no second chances. And then he's like... No, <laughs> that you're misinterpreting what happens. Like, what happens is he's got the sprinklers off, it's raining, and he's like, die, die. And, and then Don is like, no, we've got to get out of here. Yeah, right. come on and he's like all right fine she like brings him out of it basically yeah all right he, he would have he would have been more mad she he reminds him of his watch. humanity whereas yeah. whereas rose is fine with him longer. murdering him out but we sexy. find out in a later episode that uh well we'll find out yeah we'll yeah, find out, we'll uh, find anyway, out. but yeah. anyway this is not really the official star the biggest one with the christmas season christmas episode starting dog do is their false starts which yeah. is really odd because yeah. then it's like oh the season well actually technically is it's more of an extension of season three but yeah, yeah. technically but that's yeah. not what the bbc says <laughs> 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 yeah, I just I the 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 whole like way that Russell does a Christmas episodes is he just sets it in Christmas and yeah. makes the villains slightly Christmas themes like like the no guy, he like always Santa just, he always brings back these Santa things also yes yeah, so he Sonic's a cash machine and there's a cash oh, comes out as yeah. well which is great that he uses That's his Sonic really screwdriver bad. to do in, that in dumb ways yeah and and it. then there's a, the Christmas tree comes back. Christmas yeah. tree with the baubles which is fab I really love that right. as well that's really good uh, yeah and then D- Donna doesn't really want to travel with him does he even give her a chance to or oh no she do? says no Yeah, she he does give no. her a chance yeah. and she says no Yeah, um, and that's you know it's, it's, that's new it's, it's, it is it's half decent it's, uh, it's like literally a all five the Donna stuff it's is very... great and all the spider woman stuff is shit yeah, yeah. The, it's basically the rusty Christmas specials are always like average or bad yeah pretty much pretty and much. this is probably the best it gets for ten. I, so. yeah, I would say so yeah I would say so it's fine yeah. um, but then the actual start Smith, Smith and, and Jones. Jones 6 out of 10 6 out of 10 but oh, I, I don't know I'm it should sort of be this. a 7 I'm fond of it I do like it. I do like it. I can't necessarily. The Jadoon are great. The Jadoon are great. They're really uh, good. Echo, uh, Tennant's doing this whole thing where he's just pretending to be human he's for loads John of John Smith. John yeah. Smith. And I love it when the doctor's pretending to be human as a strategy. That's really fun. I really like the idea that the hospital goes to the moon. That's really yeah. whack. It it's is really, really whack. Fun. And there's like all these people in the hospital. And then the old woman is like this parasite. She wants yeah. to suck I mean, I think I think in a way the, the weakest part of this is because all of the other aspects, Tenon's really good and the aliens are really good and the conflict's really good. I think actually what lets this down a bit is Martha's <laughs> Martha. character in this. Because she's very just she's like... She's like a doctor. She's, she's a doctor, a doctor. Student. She's a yeah. very nice, good doctor character. Um, and like, But she's running with the doctor out of an infatuation for yeah, him. Yeah, she isn't um, really... She's not really... And that, and that becomes her note yeah. for like so much of it, which yeah. is a bit of a shame. Um, and she gets kind of developed later on in a better way. Yeah, also, isn't he like in a hospital gown and then he like pulls the curtain and he's wearing this blue suit? Yes. Uh, why does he get this? I don't know. Oh, yeah. And this is the first time Tenon actually starts looking good as the doctor <laughs> because season two Tenon is just so covered in brown. Yeah. And I don't like his yeah. costume in that. But, but this, this is, is But he does do the sticky up hair. In he does have really <laughs> sticky up hair. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. Yeah, and I like him going on pretending to be an idiot and how much he seems to enjoy pretending to be human as well. He gets a real kick out of it. And the Jaduna are like one of the more interesting. They're pretty iconic. They're an iconic rusty alien. They come back. Yeah, they kind of. Yeah, 
The Shadow Proclamation, bruv. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah, yeah they I are. I mean, right. they're fun. They yeah. are fun. When I first saw it, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I love their yeah. language. Yeah. Smoke, bro, glow, fo, do. Yeah, it's good. It's a, this is a good episode. I think it's a good one to watch. I but like that he takes off his tie at the beginning it, it, and then he goes off and yes. then he comes back. But it also, like, it, oh. does ma- it does feel particularly predatory. Yeah, <laughs> really predatory. He's <laughs> like, just, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a time machine. Come <laughs> on, let me show you. And she's like, oh! <laughs> and then, yeah, how can you say no? But he's yeah. like, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird. Yeah, Martha's just got this like fake, like kind of, I'm really strong, but really inside I'm I'm so weak. Yeah, and yeah. it's a bit, and it's a, it's. I never really After got Rose sold. as well. Yeah, this and is, Donna, like yeah. it just is kind of like. It yeah. yeah, and it doesn't sell. Me, I don't, I don't get really sold that the docs would want to travel uh, with it's Martha. It's weird that she's in the two part at the end of season two as well. Prima and yeah. Jalira, Angelina yeah. is in it because she's really like not a ama- She's not like stand out in it at all. She does have the Asta Hogan. <laughs> That's later. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. you're talking about the uh, the, the two part? No, the Daleks vs Cybermen episode. She's in it. Is she? She's one of the people that works at Torchwood, and she gets taken over by a cyber Cybermen. No, she. Yes, yeah, she is. She's the one who's emailing, being like, "I want to show you something cool." Oh, and I have they no go memory in, of that. They go in, and they're the first people to get attacked by Cybermen. Oh. and that's through Angelera, Angelina, Angelira. <laughs> it's her. Yeah. And then in this episode. She's like, oh yeah, my cousin worked at Torchwood. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> it's like you're my cousin who's identical to me. That's very odd. Yeah, but no one remembered her from that episode anyway, so it's not like anyone cared. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a Doctor Who expert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Smith yeah. and Jones, six out. Of, it is a six out of ten. Yeah, I guess it is. Now that you yeah. think about it, really, yeah, it um, makes sense. Oh, Shakespeare, Shakespeare Code. Code. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> no, I don't really. No, come on. I wouldn't rewatch it. No. Uh, you know what? It's the best it can be. No, it isn't. <laughs> it definitely is not the best no, it can be. It's a four out of ten. <laughs> it's the best it can be. It'd be ten out of ten. They try so hard in loads of places. Like they've got Shakespearean prose in it. Like with the witches. the actor who's playing Shakespeare is really good. He's well cast. It's written by Gareth I find, Roberts. I find it so funny. Gareth that... Gareth is like a big Doctor Who fan. And yeah. he wrote a lot of Sarah Jane adventures. Uh, and he wrote a few torch. I find I, I do find it funny that he keeps trying to fuck Martha <laughs> constantly. Yeah, That's Shakespeare a... is, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. always like he it's really funny because he lists loads of old words for black in it. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, you princess from yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like the witches are really boring. Um yeah, I, I did. I watched this. I watched this, and lost it really Labor's a lot love. of this flew over yeah. my head, he man. He wants to do Le- Lost Labor's Love, um, which is going to summon something. And right. They're like they've got these like voodoo dolls. Great. And they've got a Shakespeare voodoo doll, and they're like. <laughs> yeah, sounds shit. And they're really. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. You can no. skip this one. You can skip yeah. it. We did. No, we didn't. We, did. <laughs> we, we didn't. wish we did. <laughs> uh, so after this, we got Gridlock. Gridlock. Now this. Six out of ten. This is a much more interesting episode. And yeah. This is this is like what I, this is where like Martha season, I think does, does some interesting stuff. I think Gridlock has loads of really weird ideas that yeah. are fun in it. Uh, I love, I love just the idea of, uh, a whole community of humans and they're stuck in like traffic for yeah, their whole lives whole to keep life, them safe yeah. is really interesting because it opens with Martha being kidnapped yeah. which is quite cool yeah um, everyone's on drugs all the time as well you can see a cat person from the other yeah. one and he's really nice yeah uh, I and they, they have like a half human half cat family and they're yeah. like oh hello welcome yeah. to our car oh, hey, oh. and, and she, there's two lesbian old women yeah they keep jumping all over into these different cars yeah. and you go to and all the cars are done really nicely the people they who say kidnap about, Martha are really boring but well, the punky people. Yeah. We need three people to yeah, move up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think they're um, that bad because it's about like they come off as these villains and then you're like, no, they've got motivations. Yeah, yeah. There's like more going and on here. It's really weird though because it opens with them like putting up these shutters and sending like drugs yes. that like, make you yeah, like, feel a certain right. emotion. Yeah. And that's what led to the end of what, why the world is in such a horrible yeah, state because everyone's on drugs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is quite cool. Face yeah. of Bo turns up yeah. and he's like, you are not alone. Because I think the whole world of this feels really dire. And yeah. like, this is a really great, I like this episode for Martha. I think Martha's it's good in the this. the New Earth trilogy. Yeah, the New Earth trilogy. And I think it's like, it's it's not as good as the first New Earth episode, but it's, de- it's definitely better than it Tenet's is, first though, one. according to our rating. 
No, no, we gave it eight. The first new Earth, the end of the world. Oh, the, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Which is also a new Earth. So this thing. is the last one. Yeah, this is the, the last one. They oh. all, they, yeah, okay, yeah, eight, five, six. Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this it's is all right. No, I like it, man. I think there's, I, there's, there's a lot of interesting shit. They bring back a classic Who alien, but they do them in a, in a weird way. Is it classic? Yeah, the crab. The crab things at the bottom of the thing. What are they called? I have no idea. They're, cla- they're a John Pertwee villain. Really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh. I can't even remember what they're called though. But yeah, the crab people that. <laughs> but crab. apparently they were like in. But they've been completely changed to be like totally different types yeah. of aliens. Um, it's got an aesthetic. It's got a yeah, feel. It does. It's got good themes. It's, it, that's what it's got. It's got really good tone. I think the tone yeah. is sold really well in this. Yeah. Um, and it. Yeah. Like I said, it feels really dire. And Martha. Martha feels like the first companion. That, like she feels feels like in this episode particularly she feels she gets so fucked over way more than like rose ever does like and i like that as well that like martha seems to have a really hard time <laughs> traveling with the doctor absolutely yeah and he's like oh yeah last time i was here and she's like was that with rose yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah it there's like nothing about this day out that she can enjoy like yeah. she because he takes her to new york he's like we'll do this it's really fun takes her to the future it's horrible <laughs> they offer her drugs she gets kidnapped she spends the whole thing it's stuck in traffic yeah there's something weird about the episode list because i swear gridlock happens before the shakespeare code on in some versions of the season yeah i mean i was just running off the netflix order yeah so. exactly i yeah. think it's and i think they switched the... it or changed it i don't know yeah who maybe knows? they yeah, didn't it's good it's a six yeah. out of ten i i think people should watch this one as well i think it's an interesting i think especially if you're going into martha season this yeah. is the episode it's, you could actually s- yeah. start on yeah probably. you could definitely start on and this one probably be yeah. the best one to start with oh. <laughs> i am a human dalek i am a human Dalek. Helen Raynor wrote this one. Poor woman. Poor I feel bad woman. for her. You're being attacked by do you know, the, do you know the Doctor it, Who community. Do you know what it is? It's like this episode. I can't watch it. I'm really hard to see. <laughs> Either parts of these. Uh, yeah. are really hard Even to both of them are free. <laughs> <laughs> Together. Collectively. Together. This is a three out of 20. It's a two part. <laughs> I think we gave one a two and one a one. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, Daleks in Manhattan, I think, is like a two. And this, an evolution of the Daleks is a one. <laughs> yeah, because it's like he's doing some sort of speech. To the Daleks, and they make humans with they the make, guns, and the doctors all like. They make me. the humans into pig people. The no, pig the, people the Dalek in wants it. Pe- what, the human Dalek wants to be killed. They think they make the human Dalek. Dalek sex becomes a human Dalek, and then he's a monstrosity. Yeah, he, I remember yeah. when I was a kid, though, I was so hype about this, <laughs> and I was so confused why they never brought back the human Dalek. Because like, he was so yeah, sick. What about the human <laughs> Dalek? Like he was I so think they good. They kill him. They kill him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, they I do. remember there's a human Dalek. Dalek sec mask that you couldn't buy, and it had a voice changer in it. I was gonna buy it. <laughs> you could get that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should have got that. Yeah, that's sick. Also, first uh, Doctor Who episode with Andrew Garfield in it. Fun <laughs> fact: who would later be this in so many more. This is the prequel yeah. to Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's um, his dad in the film. Yeah. yeah. This is just the big. The biggest problem with this episode is it's like long. It's like boring. Is that for a Dalek episode is really boring? It takes ages for things to happen. They're always building up to something. The human Dalek is like really non interesting <laughs> once he's established. Um, they, it's, the, it is funny when they've enslaved him, <laughs> but it's like it's not even funny enough to keep it, you entertained so through it. It's it like so... it, that's the problem, is like not so bad that it's like funny. There's lots of people putting on. Bosch American accents. Yeah, it's real painful to watch, yeah. actually. It, yeah. it really is. It's yeah. not a satisfying watch. And the Daleks. I think every time trash. you do Daleks in the past, it's always a bit shit, really. Why would you do that? Why yeah. the. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> you do them in the present or the future because then you know the Daleks can take over. But you know, if yeah. you're watching them in the <laughs> Manhattan, they're never going to like. Because, like, Daleks wanting, like, a human element as yeah. well. Because like, David them. Tennant just constantly being like, history can be rewritten. It's like, well, yeah, but we know it won't be. Yeah. We know, <laughs> we know you'll be fine. Unless it's they, like, the unless they do feels... rewrite history and then yeah. show. Because these, yeah. these Daleks don't feel that threatening either yeah. they don't kill people it's weird because Daleks I feel like should just be killing people but they're turning people into pig people mm. which is weird <laughs> why yeah. are they turning them into pig I people know. I don't know 
It's a mess. It's a mess. It's, it's a mess. an absolute mess. Um, not worth watching. You can skip this whole thing. Martha and the Doctor is shit. <laughs> Everyone's... It's all shit. It's all unwatchable. Um, it's all terrible. But I can commend it conceptually. For trying I think something it tried new. something really new. I think it's hard to write a new Dalek story. This is a new one. It failed. Um, but, you know, you can only fail so, so this... absurdly with ambition. This is so. the last Dalek story until Journey's End. Yeah. And... For yeah, a reason, they took a long break before bringing them back. I think they. I think you need to. Yeah, after you've done the human Dalek. Yeah, it's uh, oh, and right. it looks awful. Yeah, it's, <laughs> human it's Dalek. Why are they giving him a squinty yeah. eye? <laughs> <laughs> he looks nervous constantly. Yeah, he looks so like vulnerable. <laughs> All right, Lazarus oh, experiment. Oh God, Talk- Mark Gatiss is acting in this one. <laughs> Talk me through the Lazarus experiment. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a, a scientist called Lazarus who has ju- who's created a device that can make people young again, but it has some problems and it makes him into that thing that Great. we can see. And it's a uh, it's basically just like a big monster in a big hall, and then all of them be, like running. Isn't this the e- isn't this the episode which focuses a bit more on like Martha's family? Yes. Yeah. Martha's family is weird. Because it's Martha's sister who works there. Because Martha's family are like much more, much less like interesting than like Rosa's family. And Donna's. And Donna's. Donna has a good family. Yeah, they do. The mum's a bit of a bitch. And the dad's a. They divorced. Even though she's a great actor. He's getting young young girlfriends. Yeah. And the sister is. is A hardworking woman. This ain't Fleabag, that's for sure. (laughs) This is not fair. And he's got a brother who was also a CBBC presenter. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. It's this isn't all right. This is bad. Yeah. Don't watch it. (laughs) Yeah. God. For this episode, it's like after Daleks of Manhattan, it's like fuck you, (laughs) shit, shit, shit. Oh, keep shitting on me, Mm, doctor. Please, Mm. I want more. Lovely, I love it, Rusty. So this just, I think this just came a bit too close to the Satan pit. Two-parter. It, yeah, it comes close to Satan Pit two-parter. It's like it's, it's Chibnall's so first <laughs> episode <laughs> as well. We've talked we've about done, this. We've one. done a video yeah. on it, yeah. but um, it's just like the bit, the bit, the worst Doctor Who episodes are the ones that are bland, right? Yeah. The ones that feel bland. Yeah, this feel felt very bland. It did, and it, it and it's so clearly ripping off that like movie where they keep going close <laughs> sunshine. to sunshine. Like, they keep it's so clearly ripping off sunshine. Yeah. And Doctor Who always rips off shit, like always, like it's always yeah. done that. Um, but this is very like. And then they rip off the end of the world where they have Martha phone her mum. As well. yes, they do. Yeah. So it's and like it a seems lot. Of, not as good. It's a lot of yeah. borrowed concepts. And she's got like a weird love. <laughs> Does <laughs> she have a little with, flirty Yeah, she thing. like makes out with this guy at the end. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, not good. <laughs> it's just not about anything. No, uh, we've got a video on it. You can yeah. watch our fo- you yeah. can watch our first Doctor Who video, yeah. not our new one. That's not on forty two, yeah. but the first one is. Yeah. So check it out. So check that. We'll one out. tell you why. That tells you why we don't like it. Human now, nature, family of blood. So All right. Is, now we're coming this into this is where like season stuff. two for me like season starts. Three. Season three. Shit. Yeah. Sorry, I got dyscalculia. Don't know numbers. They don't know numbers. They're like a mystery to so me. This is when season ten really comes in. <laughs> <laughs> season eleven really <laughs> finds its own with uh, Joe. Uh, Human Peter nature, Capaldi. family blood. Again, this is written by Robert Sherman, so he did he did write more. Actually. Oh, there you go. Um, and he wrote the novel. Yes, this, this is, is the based, based off. off. Yeah. Now, the because because to me this is like what again, uh, the weird thing is these t- these tenant seasons are like kind of like not that interesting and not that exciting but the two parties always come out really unique the mid the mid season two parts <laughs> from you got... Daleks and Manhattan yeah but yeah. I, I'm talking about like the Satan pair and then oh, human yeah. nature which yeah. I think these things these two two parties kind yeah. of coincide with each yeah, other yeah, yeah. Um, and because this is like the, uh, and I like this because this is set up a little bit with Smith and Jones with the Doctor like playing well, they've a just human. got a really good novel to base it on yeah. and it's the same guy who wrote the novel yeah. so it's in good hands David Tennant is doing such a good fucking yeah. job performing because this the scarecrows are really good yeah because they're, the they've got dancers in to portray the scarecrows <laughs> the, the only again. thing about this is that the, the way the two parter ends which is like <laughs> do you know why the Doctor ran because he had pity like oh yeah. come on Shut and up. then it's like and then he's like <laughs> 
he trapped him in yeah, a he, field right. of ice. He tortures yeah. all of them. Yeah. <laughs> he tortures yeah. everyone. He put them in. A, he put one girl in a mirror. Yeah. He put the guy. He put a guy in as a scarecrow. Yeah. And then he's like, he put someone else in a coffee table. What does the so, family of blood want to do? Is they just can eat people? Yeah, they just want to eat the doctor. Yeah, yeah all right. Um, and but like, and the I think maybe this episode feels a little bit slow, but I don't think that's to its uh, damage. I don't. I yeah. think it's like a, it, it, to me, this is one of those slow episodes that works because you see this do- the doctor in such a new context, yeah. acting like a human, um, and it, it really is characterized differently from his character yeah. of the doctor. Yeah, yeah. His romance between the girl, the girl, woman from yeah, space. See, is I feel really like nice. this two part was done with Eccleston. It probably wouldn't have been as good. I don't know. Eccleston would have carried it. Come on. Yeah, maybe. It, it would have been John different. Lennon impression. With his John Lennon impression. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what? Um, I don't know. I just think David Tennant really adds a vulnerability to the John yeah. Smith character. Yes, he makes he him this kind of like nervous, dorky guy. Yeah. And it's really good, uh, that performance. And mm. I I and really his... just like, I really like how dark it feels and, at yeah, times. Yeah, it does. I love and the era. I and love... it's got a sense of isolation because yeah. Martha's there looking after the doctor pretty much on her own as well. Yeah. And she's in a horrible situation. And it's like a whole nother adventure, which is wholly unpleasant. And it's the only time a love story with the doctor really does feel like works. it works. Yeah. Because, because you're not, he, you don't have that context of him being an ancient person because he doesn't believe yeah, that. Yeah, he doesn't know. He's yeah. not aware of his age. Like, and yeah just the idea of making the doctor human and is interesting and he's got elements of the doctor leaking into him yeah. and he's like ooh yeah. yeah and all the drawings and he's a teacher again yeah. as well which is yeah. great and he's a teacher at like a prep school I like school. that his character isn't really that nice yeah, yeah. no it, the character is slightly really unlikable he has a go at Martha yeah. well he's a mi- he's like a mixed bag he feels yeah. like a fully developed character uh, this this is a really unique two-parter mm-hmm. and I think it's like re- it really stands out and after I watched it Especially this time, what rewatching Doctor Who with you is one of the ones that I really retained in my head yeah. in, this, yeah, in the yeah. tenant in the tenant run. So yeah, season three started off all right, got terrible, was terrible. And now for a we're while. starting to peak. Well, peak up. this is like yeah. this is a huge escalation. This yeah. is great when you yeah. consider that Daleks in Manhattan is a three out of twenty, <laughs> yeah. and now we're back <laughs> at like a fourteen, 14 out of yeah. twenty, which is like a good a good rating. Um, and then let's see what follows this. I can't. Believe- Ten out of ten. Moffat comes in. He's Moffitt like, comes in. You know, "Let me you... fix this." Yeah, because this is the cheap episode as yeah, well. Because Love it. and Monsters was the cheap episode before. Yeah. Season one didn't have a cheap episode, um, so I can't remember what they call them. But they do one episode a season, which is like slightly less actors. Yeah. Uh, so Small they only scale. had Tennant and Ma- and Freema and Jalira uh, for a brief, for like one day. Yeah, and then. Moffat just comes in and kills it. He really He does just that. makes the definitive episode, this episode of New works Who. really well. Like the yeah. episode that anyone can watch and like yeah. genuinely be scared of yeah. and genuinely like. Yeah. And it's so it it is really Doctor Who. It is, yeah. Um and it's really good. Angel scared the shit out of me. I remember uh, I had a friend who I used to hang out with and I, I remember I like freaked him out by telling him the Weeping Angels were coming to get us because I was like, we're not even looking at them right now. We're in bed. Yeah, yeah. There's no way to stop yeah. them. They're on their way, bro. Uh, <laughs> and you see the end of it. It said all statues of the Weeping Angels. We're fucked. Yeah. Um, it's like similar to how kids pretended to be Daleks yeah. in the 60s. And this this basically made everyone just wanted to play with the lights. And yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It in did. In same way. I, it did. And it, it really is like it that. It was just this so is... satisfying to see this as well. Because yeah. I saw it as it was on TV. Yeah. and I was like holy fuck that this is so good another another really nice thing about Blink um, and one of the things that makes it stand out because Tenon doesn't have this that much it doesn't happen all that often anyway but there's loads of time play stuff yeah. with the Tenon tapes and the writings yeah. on the wall yeah, yeah. telling her how to react in real time because he knows what she's going to do yeah, yeah. all that stuff it's just really cool. Like, yeah, yeah. And the angels is just the fact that they send you back in time and how that plays with narrative. The idea yeah. that one of them gets touched and then she gets contacted by that person immediately. It gives it this really disturbing uh, edge. It's the type of horror that can only exist in Doctor Who with that time play well, yeah. and these angels well, and them being Moffitt aliens. Well, that's how does like scary things is it's like scary in the mind of a child yeah. what would a child be scared yeah. of and it's the idea that the statues are watching and it's yeah. really playful it and on the DVD commentary of this Moffat's there Russell's there the director's there talking about it and Moffat's like oh it'd be so good if just you know the 
kid's looking one way and you just see a statue scuttle past him. And both of them are like, no, no, don't do that. Don't make them move. That's like the whole point. <laughs> yeah. And also the, the Reaping Angels are played by dancers. Yeah. And they're just full well, costumes. That, that's they're what, actual yeah. costumes. But then they also made Statues, statue yeah. versions as well. So it's this really... The angels look so, really good. It's the angels so look well really done. Good. And it's, pra- it's practical, basically. They're which also is sad, really you know. There's some sadness to them as yeah. well. There's the loneliness to uh, them. And again, it, it plays with that. It, it, it welcomes the fact that things can be unexplained in yeah. the universe and uses that to its advantage. Like, you never really know what, like, the Weeping Angels are. And, and Sally, that's Sally Sabaro and the guy is, like, a pre really sit to Amy and Rory. Yeah, and, and they're, they're really very good similar characters. To Amy and, and, they're, Rory. and they're really fun in this as yeah. well. They're very good. They are good characters, and you, you do like them and root for them. They don't feel like supplements, really. Like, no, they just feel no. like this is the yeah, story yeah, yeah. that we're being told. One now. thing I did as a kid is on the DVD extras of the season three DVDs, the entire tenant recording oh, in really? one take. Oh, wow. And I just got the script for Sally Sparrow. Did you talk and to And I her? just talked to David Tennant for a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, great. Good. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> no, that's pretty that. badass, yeah. though. Yeah, actually. Absolutely, it's really that's cool. Pretty. That's why that I was the most cool. popular guy at school. Yeah, no, you had yeah. a lot of yeah. pussy, actually. Yeah, I got laid <laughs> all day after doing that. <laughs> How old were you? Twelve. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Blink, 10 out of 10. It's the, 10 first out 10 10. Out, it's the first 10 out of 10 as well. So that's what's really interesting about the season three. Yeah, you should have made the one. 10 feel bigger, you know. You should have been like, 10 out of 10. Yeah, but nothing means anything. So yeah, I right. figured just, Next you know. slide. <laughs> <laughs> Utopia. Utopia. See, like, come on, man. Yeah. You go you go from human nature to Blink to Utopia. Utopia yeah. And suddenly you're in a totally different place. Yeah. And tonally, this, all of this has felt so much more interesting yeah. than any of the stuff that Utopia you got tonally with. Utopia brings Tenet back Captain Jack Hartness. Yes. From Parting of the Ways has now been made immortal by yes. Rose Tyler. And you see him dealing with and that. he can't die. And he's been doing the first season of Touchwood. Touchwood. Beyond the police, beyond the government, beyond, beyond the, the FBI. C- CIA, yeah. beyond the beyond tele- unit, beyond, we're beyond NBC, yeah. um, beyond 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 the police, beyond we're beyond Poland. We're bigger than Poland at beyond, least. Beyond the EU, beyond Brexit, beyond Brexit, we are Touchwood. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, he's cool. It's good to have him. It's and always nice when Jack's around. He's, I he's Jack back. always, even if Jack's not even well placed, it's always nice to have him around. Well, he's, this, his he's chemistry with Tennant is amazing. Yeah. It's really, really good. Um, it, it's very different to the one with Eccleston, yeah, but it's yeah. still really nice. It, well, um, they're more familiar with each yeah, other as well, exactly. and they're like friendlier and with each other. Martha's just sort of there, but it's great. Yeah, you know, she's there. there. And it's your favorite uh, female alien, uh, <laughs> Chando. 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 <laughs> you love Chando. Chando's well. Cute. Yeah, man, you're all about Chandler. She's not in anything. I, I looked her up. She's not like a prolific actor, but she's in. She's in this, and then she's also in another Doctor Who episode, but without the makeup. Yeah, Chandler. <laughs> Chan, Chan, do you Chan, want me hello, to? Hello, how are you today, though? Chan, would you like me to wipe your feet, though? And she's good, and Yana's she's good. Just, Yana is fantastic because this actor. whole episode is like it's weird that Doctor Who I realise Doctor Who structures it a lot it's like it has like a false episode every yeah. time because Turn Left is one of them as well yeah, yeah. Um, and there's loads of them yeah, yeah. Um, but and like, then the reveal with the fog watch oh look human nature this is what it is it's like, this episode is the fog watch is back and when he because it, these episodes are specifically there to like give you like amazing cliffhangers yeah, <laughs> essentially yeah. and this is the, probably the best cliffhanger this is a better cliffhanger. Well, I guess when I was a kid, I had no idea who it was. Yeah, actually. I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> uh, so anyway, basically, when they do the master, they're like, okay, everyone needs to know that this guy's a time lord. Everyone needs to know that. How do we communicate that? And they go, oh, we just give him the same regeneration as, as Eccleston. Dog. But that doesn't make any sense because he's not got the heart of the TARDIS in him. He's not like exploding. It was a different color. No, it wasn't. It was the same color. It's exactly the same. I don't know. And it looks by the different. side, no, it's red. It's still orange and red. It's an explosion. Tennis. And they did that because they needed it. They needed the audience to know that, that it was a, a regeneration. Yeah. But they fucked it because now every time the doctor regenerates, he does that aside from Capaldi. Yeah. But 
it's such a shame because it's like a really boring regeneration. Like, yeah, I would have been really good if the fog well, it, started it, to just melt his face. Yeah, or like, it, you know, it, prevent, like, oh. it prevents like a degree yeah. of like uh, because regeneration before the narrative. regenerations were all different and they all had like a different like flavor unique. to Yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. And it's such a shame. But other things I do like about Utopia, I do like the world. I really like the world. Yeah, uh, I like all the like the like primal humans who are eating people. And I, I like, like how the, they get there as well because yeah. Tardis is trying to shake him up. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the and opening the credits would have been so good. If yeah, you know, I know. Yeah. Hanging on because the episode opens up with Captain Jack Hartness grabbing the TARDIS. Yeah, and we were just saying how fun it would be that if the opening credits and the TARDIS is flying <laughs> you can see through, it, he's just on. holding ah. on to the TARDIS, There's which a is a really missed great, opportunity. It wouldn't really even great be hard. Scene with Captain Hartness in the radiation. Yeah, room that's really where good. They're talking, they're talking about it immortality. So satisfying. It is really satisfying. And the There's a lot of and they talk about Rose. That comes back, which is weird. Yeah, the hand in the jar from. Oh yeah. Christmas invasion because he has that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, how the hell did Captain that's Jack Harkness so, That's know? another dumb thing about Christmas invasion. His it's hand, the hands, yeah, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> uh, um, and but this is a really nice sense of desperation to it as well. And Yana is a nice character yeah. and makes it even fun and more he kills fun Chan though and he kills Chan heartbreaking <laughs> yeah you cried, didn't you? I was so upset. Bring Sam, her back. Sam's got a big thing for Chan though. Um, it's the ideal woman. <laughs> but yeah really good and then it ends with the master being revealed and you're like shit and you're at the edge, edge of your seat and it sends you right in to, to the, the final drum. two-parter which 16 out of 20 16 out of 20 which i think is is good it's yeah, deserved because right. this 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 is a much more interesting finale over daleks v cyberman like it fell yeah. by the numbers this really felt like it was something different yeah. this uh, felt it was like a yeah, political yeah. espionage yeah, thing yeah. for like the first half of it that's really fun who's it's the like, actor who plays the master john sim john sim is so good so good so perfectly so, cast so well cast tenants yeah. master tenants master he wouldn't have worked with okay. eccleston but no he works really, really well, well with tenant yeah. yeah he and he's He's just really charismatic. He's having so much He's fun. He's so yeah. much enjoying himself. I love all the shit with uh, Ted and Martha and Jack on Earth. And on, they're wearing the, the keys run. Yeah. on the run. Yeah. Everyone's after them. They're wanted. And he's got that speech about you the know, Time Lords. And yeah. He's like, stared into the heart and like, of the, the Master is the Prime Minister. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's insane. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's a different type of risk to yeah, humanity. Yeah. And then it gets escalated even further in the second part. Yeah. Where you literally have the Doctor imprisoned. He's an old man. Yeah. Look at yeah. him. Look at <laughs> old he gets. He looks they awful. turn him into a little leprechaun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're and he's like Tennant's pathetic. He's yeah. weak and frail, and the master is running everything. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. the art doctor's arch nemesis. Um and then and then this is the see this is the episode where really Martha becomes like a good companion as yeah, well. She proves herself. She proves herself. Well it's great, and, like, she becomes more militaristic. Yes. And she becomes and like a revolutionary. Yeah, she becomes like really militaristic, which really makes sense for her. Weirdly, it I don't does. Know why, it weirdly, it, does. it just yeah. suits her and it works yeah. for her. And she her can just deal with the pressure. Of it. Yeah, yeah, and she's because because Rose wouldn't because work it, exactly doing no. That. Yeah. And it, that's neither the, would Donna. Neither Fuck would that. Donna. Yeah. But that's what's cool about Martha is that because Martha is the companion that went through the most shit. Yeah. So by the time she's here, she's equipped for this. Yeah, yeah. And her family's being tortured, and she's like, "No, I'm going to like solve this. This is like this is my moment. It's a yeah, and it's a whole." Yeah. yeah that's insane like yeah. that's so ambitious and then to the toclophane come and they just mm. like start killing everyone Bro. and you're like who the hell are the toclophane they open up the casing and it's the cute little kid from yes! Utopia yeah and, and it's all like, linked the... it's, it's so linked. dark and twisted yeah. the master like contorted the last of the human race into becoming a horrible race of yeah. like mur yeah. psychopathic murdering machines yeah, yeah. not too dissimilar from the Daleks yeah, yeah. it's beautifully it's beautiful bitter poetry it's... only thing that lets it down <laughs> which is so dumb is the doctor going super saiyan oh you know you because know. everyone believes in him <laughs> he, he starts gets, glowing he blue. gets younger and he's like oh, oh i've had a year to wire myself oh, in my god uh, you so... know what i'm gonna say no no you yeah. know what i'm gonna say uh, i'm sorry no, isn't it? I forgive you. Yeah, I forgive you. I forgive you. Exactly. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You know I'm going to say. That's the, thing, that's the biggest thing. Is like, it, it, again, it just caves into this like hyper melodrama. Regenerate! Yeah. Regenerate! Come on! He's 
since I last the time. It's just sort of like literally some of the most unforgivable <laughs> shit. <laughs> Tortures your companions and like you're going to have this whole scene with like intense homoerotic subtext. Yeah. <laughs> now it really you all jars. Got left. And it's like the it's the one it's the one ending. It's just that that like it's such a sm- it's not it's such a small part of this two parter as well. Yeah. And so the rest of it is so good and moves at a pace yeah. as well. Russell's not so good at the. The, those endings those endings because then even Rose like absorbing the heart no the yeah it, then, like, it does feel tiny it's them kissing stuff. it's yeah. just the regeneration yeah. that ends up working yeah. there but yeah. like them kissing and yeah. him being like because imagine Come if he didn't me. regenerate how weird that ending would have been yeah they would have been really yeah. uncomfortable how would they have the ended next it? Day she like, would have absorbed the heart of the TARDIS killed all the Daleks and then what would have put them the, back in the TARDIS and gone yeah she released the energy and then it cuts to them on the TARDIS going no, he kisses her, takes the regeneration yeah. energy, puts it back on the TARDIS, <laughs> and cuts them back on the TARDIS, going, that was awkward, I'm really yeah, sorry, yeah, I know I you're ju- with me. That was the only way that, that was I like could... Very, that was the only way like, I could well, get you didn't the make out with me, though. It was the only way. <laughs> no, but you put your tongue, like, right <laughs> down... It was the only way. <laughs> it was the only way <laughs> to absorb the TARDIS half. I feel a bit un- uncomfortable, I don't... <laughs> It was the only way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the same vein, this feels weird as well, really. Yeah, really. The Super Saiyan thing. Um, but, yeah. but uh, yeah, and it's a real deus ex machina that like solves yeah. all the problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's whatever. And it reverses time. But all the stuff in the lead up to that, because the whole way you're like, how are they going to like sort this out? Um, this is horrible. And I really like the scenes where Martha goes and like tells the story of the yeah, Doctor as well. Yeah. Those are quite good as well. Yeah, I and like the end scene when he burns his body. As yeah, well. that's all good. Very Star Wars. Yeah, very Star Wars. Yeah. But yeah, so it's 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 the best it's, it's the best tenant finale. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and John Sims, uh, fucking amazing. And yeah. re- this is really worth. He uses the Lazarus technology. Yeah, so he's bringing that back, <laughs> bring that back in. Yeah. And then the human Daleks in it, so that gets brought back in. And there's <laughs> yeah. people in it. That's right. And Shakespeare <laughs> and comes Gridlock. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so final season three rating is five point four out of ten. 10. Is it's that bit, lower? Yeah, it is. It's five. You said two. It's three. I have Discalcula. <laughs> season three. Season four, final rating. Oh, oh, shit. We're back into season... F- oh, no, we're not. Shit, I've really let us down. There we Sorry. go, season two. Season, two, season final three, ra- final season rating. Three. 5.4. 5.4. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, what, what, what's your takeaway from this, from that season? So, yeah, the takeaway of it is there's a lot of episodes that are dog shit, but then Lots. there's a lot of episodes which are... It's kind of like... The antithesis of season two. Yeah, where it's where like... there was no standout episodes, but Blink is in this. Yeah. Plus Human Nature. Yeah. Plus Utopia. Plus, plus the Master the Star. Two, two parters. Yeah. Plus the Human Dalek. So. <laughs> yeah. A lot of highlights. <laughs> really. <laughs> it's definitely like one of the yeah. weirder. I and Gridlock as well. Start which is with Gridlock. And watch then... Gr- then watch Human Nature up yeah. until the end. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe and maybe watch. You know, Daleks in Manhattan. If you really want to, just if like, you want to feel feeling masochistic, masochistic. Yeah. If you just want to fall asleep, if you want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 or if you're making love to a woman, <laughs> it's really good to put on them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Human Dalek bit, gets, perfect for a climax. Oh no, actually, if you want to make love to a woman, you want to get the season three DVD and get on the best special features and get the blink. Let's <laughs> talk to Ten. Have, mem- have it memorized. Just and be it. like, hey, watch this. Yeah. What about the angels? Ah. <laughs> are, you ha- are you making love during that? Or is it before? No, you've got to do it as a performance. This is a performance. And then you put on Daleks of Manhattan. <laughs> Then you go for it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Could you? That would be the weirdest thing to do ever. <laughs> I don't think of anything weirder to do before like, having sex with someone than that. Like, it's very random as well. The scene with the regenerator as it's well. It's so specific. Regenerate. Regen- oh my god, it's so in love. Yeah, could you please be the because, because you dress up? Yeah. Because, you know, the, big, the coolest thing about the. Because I really buy into the homoerotic subtext because, like, the by, the, by the mother yeah. because Moffat runs with that as yeah. like a canonical he thing. He uses it, yeah, and I respect that. A I lot, respect really. it, yeah. yeah. Um, so we now we go on to... season four. Take yeah. a break. Go straight in. Let's go straight in. Let's, let's do, go straight let's in. Season Donna four. comes back. <laughs> what? Donna is prob. Donna's the best rusty companion. Yeah. 
No, in my opinion, she is without a doubt the best recipe companion. She's like the I most. I prefer fun. season one Rose, but that's just me. Ah, mm, uh, yeah, maybe, but I don't know. Like with this, because the romantic <laughs> sub subtext gets completely stripped away with Donna, and like what I like about her relationship with Ten in particular is they are best mates. They yeah. are like best mates. They really get on. They just yeah. love each other. Well, yeah, because what Russell was writing a character, and the idea was that it would be like. A character similar to Donna, mm. and then they found out that Catherine Tate was to, was down to, to do down it. To do it, and Catherine yeah. Tate's so good as well. She's like a she's a good actor. She's great, yeah. She's really good at comedy, and I think because of that, they make this whole season a little bit more funnier as well. Yeah, but it does have its edge. Yeah, it does have. We'll its edge. find out how yes. edgy it can be. Voyage of the Damned. Two out of ten. We gave it a two out of ten. Yeah. This is the most watched episode of Doctor Who since it came back. It, it, 8 million people watch this. Oh no, 11 million people watch this. I, I this really is the episode really of Doctor Who that most people have seen. I like the bit where he uses his screwdriver to pop the champagne. Why? I don't really like it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, do you not? Oh. Yeah. Why uh, did it blow up? It's a sonic device. <laughs> it shouldn't burst the bottle if it's glass. Wow. Wow. Well, I like this one... You know, I like bits of this. I like the little midget alien guy. The Hapa Bata Tafala. I like the the Earth based historian who doesn't know anything about Earth really. Um and is giving like bullshit talks about the Earth. Um I like the stunts. I like the action. I so like should this budget. not be a two? I would give this a four. Should we rework it then? What? Should we? I can't remember it that well. Uh, it's quite fun. I can't even argue against you, you know, right now about it. Like, <laughs> it's a bit stupid, but I it's remember really it just fun. being like dumb. It is really dumb, but it is consistently dumb because it's on a replica of the Titanic, and it's just stupid. The whole thing is stupid. Um, but it, doesn't it go into like really like intense melodrama? No. Doesn't she die? And the yeah, doctor's she all does crying die. and stuff. She does die, but it's like kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Christmas special. It's, I, it's not good. I don't, I it's, not, it's, it's definitely it's, it's not too worthy. Special, it's definitely it? not worthy of a two. In all my right, opinion. well. We'll rewatch it. We'll rewatch it. We might get back to you. We might not. Partners, watch. Partners in Crime. In crime. Seven. Now, this is lit. This, this is, is really a really good. lit Doctor yeah. Who episode. This is like my favourite introduction to like a tenant season. Yeah. This is my favourite introduction of a companion. It's really fun. This is like one of my, I think one of the funniest episodes and uh, it's got the right balance of being disturbing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, All the bits with Donna and Tennant investigating the same well, case. Well, I think what makes Russell really great is he's, an, he's a drawer. He, mm. He's an artist. So he drew out what these little fat aliens are yeah. supposed to look like. Yeah. And it, that's really, like, really yeah. helped it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just a really great little... Thing it's with just Donna a, and yeah. the Doctor missing each other you know, and not quite like yeah. keeping you know it's funny and the music's really good in this episode yeah. particularly I remember yeah. all the music everyone's really introduced Donna's well. theme is just yeah. really great Tenen, it's, it's really fun to see Tennant doing like his human thing again and investigating shit yeah, and yeah. Then, <laughs> but then Donna's like so good as well yeah, yeah. and it's, the, again the scene where they see each other from across the window and yeah. they first run into each other yeah, yeah. is so good the woman as well the main woman villain is um, she's pretty good yeah she's really fun yeah. she's like she's hammy but like to the right degree yeah Russell just comes into the new season it's really fun and yeah. he does and everything it's he really knows do. what he's doing and I think yeah. I think like like with Donna as the, this companion, they've really hit the ground running. There's just no excited. dull scene in this. There yeah. is not. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. I it's only it's a seven, to... though, because there's no scene in this that is particularly like uh, incredible. outstanding. Yeah. yeah. And the, uh, the uh, science fiction's good. The science it's fiction's good. It's good, but it's not like really great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a bit... Uh, it's set. not quite it's as a, good as the Rose. Set, the settings are a little yeah. bit like bland. It's not quite yeah. as good as Rose. Yeah. But like, yeah. But no, it's very it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. And that's it's why really, it's really, seven. it's really, yeah. it is just yeah. really fun. And I, I remember watching this and I just had a smile on my face through yeah. like most of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it, well, it's, for me, I think it's one of the best, because Rusty wrote this one. Right? Yeah. It's one of the best examples of like his strengths as a writer. Absolutely. In terms of like, it's very, very purely Russell T Davies. And I don't think he's trying to be anything but himself <laughs> yeah. in this really. Um, <laughs> but it's not indulgent. It's, it's, yeah. it's tight. Yeah. But it's really got his flavor, which is yeah. this like, 
really great mix of camp and sort of disturbing, but it's funny and kind of dark. And it's not about like an evil thing trying to take over the world. It's a bit more weird. That it's a bit stranger than yeah, that. Yeah. Kind of Douglas Adamsy with the it whole is, yeah. lumps of fat jumping yeah. out of people yeah, yeah. and stuff. It's got a really unique flavor. Yeah, I mean, it could have been a bit weirder though. Like the dogs could have had one that's like a pet or something. It could have been. Yeah. It could have had it that. It could have gone yeah. really Definitely weird. Could have had that. Yeah. And it's it's good because Donna like proves herself as a companion in the first. And and this has like a really funny scene where he's like, I just want a mate. Yeah. She's like, I'm not gonna be your mate. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I'm not yeah. gonna mate me. Becoming really self aware of the whole Martha. Uh, but and the yeah. weird datey thing yeah, that yeah. it got himself into. Moving on to the fires of Pompeii. Woo! See, I think Voyage okay. of the Dam is more fun than this. So I like. Maybe. I think fires of Pompeii is like super boring but like peter capaldi's in it so peter capaldi. and it does it does the whole it starts introducing that question which is the whole thing about this is like who do you say who do you say yeah, how does it make any oh, sense oh my god yeah. what it's is got this a theme stuff? it's got themes yeah too. it's okay the set and the and the, and the, and the stuff they're doing with the voice stuff is fun there's like fun yeah. bits to it it's just as good it's as shakespeare just... code at the end yeah. of the day yeah well it's got a bit more going for it actually because there's donna there yeah and donna is more, more fun. fun yeah yeah but and it, and she's more of a proactive. But the villains character. are just really, really, really boring. Yeah, it is. They're so dull. It is dull, and Tennant's back in the brown. I think this is Gareth Roberts again. Does it ever? Because it no, it's re- sure. it seems to be really like. Don't choo- quote me on that. Okay, I won't. Okay. <laughs> but it's so Doctor Who's really weirdly choosy with when they decide to have the characters dress up for the era, oh, or yeah. when they don't. Yeah. I find they don't dress odd. up in Shakespeare code. Though. No, I know they yeah. don't. I know they don't, but they do in like some of Capaldi stuff. But then there's some episodes, historic episodes, where they don't. But in Dickens' one, she dresses. Rose yeah, dresses see? up. See, yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I just think it just eats up pages. It does. Yeah. I mean, I guess, but I mean, you could just have them come out of the TARDIS in the clothing. Yeah. But I guess they want to iconify like them as a look. Yeah, I, don't I know. guess so. I don't know. But Fires yeah. of Pompeii is very like you can you can skip that one. I would say do. Yeah. In fact. Planet, Planet of the, of of the, the Ood. Ood. Now Nine this, out of ten. This is Whoa. sick. This it's is so good. good. It's this so is really, really fun. Good. Just because we love the, Ood. Ood. <laughs> <laughs> we really like Ood. We really, really do it's love It's a snow the Ood. episode with Ood in it. Yeah. The and Ood looks so good just, in the They do this whole apple thing with the Ood. Yeah. Introducing the new Ood. Yeah, they're like a product you can buy. The whole planet is good. The bosses are sick. It's a fun criticism of like capitalism and slavery as well. And this is like where you see Donna's like strengths as a character. Yeah, she cares. Yeah, Yeah. Donna is so empathetic as a character and it's really fun to see that. Whereas like Rose, Rose had a lust for adventure. Martha was in love with the Doctor. Like Donna's doing this because she cares about like helping yeah. people. I mean, Rose cared about helping people. Too. She did, and but so she, did Martha. But yeah. Everyone cares about helping people, but yeah. it's like it's not their motivation for traveling. Like it's yeah. excitement. Like yeah. you know, you see that in the Victoria episode where they're all having jokes whilst yeah. they're being chased by a werewolf. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it comes from that lust for adventure. Whereas Donna like brings it always. Rose's to, empathy like, is like kind of. Shaky. Oddly, it's like sort of there. Yeah, because so, Rose didn't give a shit about the Ood and, and then Satan the new pit. Earth is like, these people are dying. What have you done with Rose? The real Rose would care. <laughs> the real Rose would care about <laughs> She'd these give people. a shit. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Who are you? Um, yeah. And this has a really some really uh, good disturbing scenes in it it's as well. It's just so good. Because yeah, there's, a, so there's good. a scene where they find the Ood with their brains in their hands and it's meant to be exposed and that's really yeah. touching. That's and really the, it's good. really weird that Dog is like, a, you know, these uh, Ood are gross. They yeah. look disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So it's so, it's a real testament to like how well written this is that you really feel for them yeah, it, as an alien race and how much you want them to be saved. I'm always surprised this isn't a two-parter. Yes, I know. Yeah, it's a single. It feels like it, it is a two part because there's so much in it. Yeah, um, it's really, it's really weird intense. though because there is that weird like uh, crane like there's a chase scene in like this cargo room where they've got these like big old oh, like bulldozer things. Yeah, with a crane and that seems a bit bit, bit of shit. <laughs> we're just ignoring that in this rating because it has such a strong ending. Uh, it's and it's full Ood's it, transformation. It, it does, which looks really, yeah. it looks good, yeah. is disturbing. And I think it just really works If because it's a single episode and it's separate and it's not about like the larger Doctor Who narrative in much of a way. But it still has really high stakes and yeah. it really gets to you emotionally it's and just, it puts the characters through yeah. a lot. Um, and the Ood are strong. familiar to us because yeah. we saw them in the last season, well, in season two, actually. We saw them in season two and now 
now they've been brought back and it's like a bit there, more there is one really weird line <laughs> where the doctor's like because in Satan pit where they're just slaves the doctor doesn't he's care he's like oh yeah I didn't really think about it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I kind of owe them one. All yeah, right, I help them this yeah, time. Yeah, he like, kind of decides <laughs> to help them, um, <laughs> which is yeah. funny. Yeah, but I it's really great. like it. It's, it's really Check really it fun, out. and yeah. it's full of weird quirkiness. It's so weird. It's yeah. so weird, and yeah. but it takes itself seriously every step of the yeah. way. It's very very strong, and I think probably my favorite episode from the season, maybe. Ooh. Maybe. We'll have to see. Yeah. It's not mine. But now it's time for a <laughs> bonus round. What? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Surprise. <laughs> I've put bonus bits. Bonus oh, slides. Oh, no. Bits. So I, will, I think it's a great time, since you love the Ood so much, mm-hmm. to choose out your top three most emotional mood Ood moments. This can be any emotion. You could be angry. <laughs> or you could be, you know, cry. What are your t- just think about it. Give yeah, it no, a my my top three most emotional Ood <laughs> moments. And number three would have to be in the Satan pit, uh, when all the Ood answer a question at the same time, and you have that kind of Greek sh- uh, mm. choral speaking. Yeah, which is great because they've got so many extras dressed up as Ood. So when they all speak at the same time, and they they go like, they say like something like, "We are not here." Or something like that, and it's like their EP ratings are like a hundred. They yeah, should be yeah, dead. Yeah. And it it generally is creepy, really, really creepy. That so that's it. the emotion. I feel scared. Yeah, that's my number fair. three emotion. Number three. Uh, my number two most emotional ood moment would have to be from uh, the doctor's wife, <laughs> uh, which is when there's an ood with green eyes, and he, it, you know, it's the emotion of seeing an ood again. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, they haven't like, been there like for the emotion years. of seeing an old friend and seeing an old friend and with the green eyes I'm like you look so sick and the specific <laughs> moment is in the the TARDIS mm. and the TARDIS has been like eaten by this asteroid guy and it's all green the TARDIS has gone all green and the U comes in with green eyes and he's like threatening and he's got the ball and he's like Ugh. and then the TARDIS crushes him and he dies so yeah, it's like it's sad as well it's sad it's sad it's two emotions but it's in also one. like okay he needed to go but it was, just, it was just great to see an Ood again. Mm-hmm. And number one has to be the Ood in a cage in Planet of the Ood. Yeah, uh, singing. Singing with the thing in his mouth. Because that does make you want to cry. That's really sad, yeah, because he's being tortured. That is sad. But we're back now, and we've ha- just had Sam's top three most emotional <laughs> Ood moments. Absolutely. Uh, is there any moment that I missed out, do you think, that was emotional for you? Yeah, there is one, actually. Uh, there is there is, there is is one, it's... Um, what? It's the Ood moment <laughs> where the tenant comes onto the snow planet because he's been called by them. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> and that, that one... That's in the last that's the Time Lords And you've got one. a big brain yeah. Ood. And that one was confusion. <laughs> that was my core emotion there. And he was like, the Doctor Donna spinning, <laughs> moving, spinning, dying. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no, no. Like, he will knock the four times. Fuck are the Oods doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go and see the Oods. Why are the Oods this yeah. now? So, yeah. Yeah, that's Doesn't a... an Ood appear at the end of yes. the Waters of Mars? Yes. And go like, Hello. And then disappears. And then disappears. Come see us. Come to our planet. Mm. Yeah. It was shit. That was a yeah, confusion. Strong emotion. Yeah. Confusion. So we go on to the next two-parter this the is first like Sontaran the introduction episode. of the Sontarans this is pretty good it's a 12 out of 20 which is six I, each yeah yeah it's about I don't know about fair good to see Martha again Martha comes back and she's that... introduced as a more interesting character yeah, she's part no? of the first unit because episode this, is, as well. this is her continuing from her military thing yeah Martha being a proactive military person just works for her unit I think. being back unit's back the Sontaran plan is Bit dumb. Yeah. And the guy that he they've got like a, a tech man. They've yeah. got like a Rattigan. Rattigan. Yeah. And he's a bit he's quite good. I think he's quite well performed. Yeah, he's he's doing he's trying his best. Yeah. Um and Don is really playful in this. There's yeah. there's a really funny scene. Again, this is this sort of makes fun of a lot of this the sort of holes that tenant seasons got themselves into because she was like, Oh, I'm gonna go. And he's like, What? Really? I thought we were having so much fun. And she's like he's talking to her yeah, really yeah. emotionally goes oh, you mean just for a bit? Yeah, like, yeah no, I just need to hang out with my family. <laughs> and I love, oh, I love that. Like, you idiot. I mean, for me, yeah. like, the real... Because the, the standout stuff for all of this season to me is just, like, uh, Tennant and Donna, like, the yeah. Doctor and Donna hanging out, yeah. doing things, and the Doctor and Donna just well, being really psyche to him. Maybe, Martian man. I think Moffat was a lot better at writing unit episodes than Russell, but Russell has a pop at it. 
he has a go. And the Santarans, um, yeah, they're in it. They're yeah. not bad, but they're not good either. It's but just, they how look do you good. Do, they do look good. And they're threatening. I don't yeah. know, because there's, the really, there's a pretty good scene where the Santaran first comes out and he's laying out loads of strategy and I defeating think they loads of soldiers. I should have just redone the Santaran story from Tom Baker's era. Where like this is Santaran just like commanding in med he's like in medieval England and he's just like build more build more oh, guns brilliant. yeah and that's it's really good. funny so I would have just had one Santaran being separated from the fleet I think an is entire it, Santaran so invasion yeah. thing is a bit this oh. is the last time that you they see should, the they, Santarans they love war a, yeah. they love war so this whole idea of them like gassing people with the Atmos cars this is it you think it. they'd want to do combat it's just really. like they just want to kill things yeah. Like, yeah. And this is the this is the first and last time we see the Santarans as like a threat as well. Yeah. They stop taking them seriously yeah. after this, basically, don't they? It's gonna be really hard to bring them back as a threat, but maybe it will happen. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe Chibnall will bring them back. And make them really cool. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Twelve out of ten. Is it worth watching? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's think not. it is really. No. <laughs> uh, like, unless you're a big Martha fan. <laughs> yeah no yeah i, I just guess. don't really there's a much better two part i just this yeah i just don't really care no yeah, yeah it's very much like a mess it's a two part of it's so boring kind of for a unit as well yeah I mean, it's, it's, a little, it's it's still six it's okay yeah it's very okay but it's I not it should be it doesn't I think feel, it should be 11 out of 20 it doesn't feel special enough i think yeah. but uh we'll move because it doesn't really do anything inherently wrong it just doesn't become it doesn't have as much fun as it should have yeah exactly yeah but the next one is oh, the God. I would never. I would never. I would never do it. I would never kill anyone. I love I love the fact that she flies off. <laughs> and we never hear yeah, from so her again. Doctor has a daughter, um, and she's Time Lord. She's cloned from him, isn't she? Uh, yeah, and he doesn't bring her with him for some reason. Yeah, then he doesn't want her to Even travel with David him. David Tennant ended up marrying that she would have been a cool companion. Could have done yeah. an Adam thing. <laughs> Just if if she'd gone on to be a companion, it could have been a bit more interesting. Or just travelled with him for a bit. Yeah, it's just I don't understand they why they do this. Like, because this is a really weird thing to happen what to happen- the doctor. What happens? Wait, so he leaves, and does she just come back alive, and then he goes? Or he leaves, assuming that she doesn't have regeneration energy. Oh, and then so the- he thinks she's dead. Yeah, and then she does regenerate, and then she just goes away on her own. Yeah, and she's like, I'm going to travel the galaxy. And then, get, and then Moffat and, and Russell. Moffat and Russell have decided that she flies into a moon accidentally and dies. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, yeah. Which the actress who plays... Isn't it, there a Doctor's Daughter, like, all big Finnish story? There is, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. This this episode is like a so lot of... So she might me- be developed. The, the, <laughs> the problem is that this episode is like a lot of melodrama without really, like... It's this not substantive awful. enough. Like, yeah, there's nothing it's not good about it. Enough. Martha's there. Is Martha in it as well? Yeah, Martha's in it. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Martha's in it and she doesn't do anything apart from help a guy, one of these one of these monsters with the tubes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she, like, helps him with his leg. Great. She's broken. And they're at war. They've been at war for ages and they keep, like, cloning themselves or something. Yeah. Um, the war is about nothing. And then the doctor makes them all be friends at the end. And he's in point, he points a gun at someone. Yeah, he and goes, then goes, he, he would goes never. I would never. I would never do this. Even though? Even though the guy killed his daughter. He did, just shot her. He Even did. though she was just standing there. She was like, he just shot her. Because she needed to die. And then she regener- She regenerates, but she doesn't. her Changed. face doesn't change. Well, she comes back to life. She just comes back to life. Doctor thinks she's dead. She comes back to life. She goes, I'm going to travel the galaxy. Flies right and into a moon. And it's shit. It's a shit episode. It's very pish. So... <laughs> Don't let's, watch it. Let's hope there's a better one round the corner. Let's hope. Oh, there it's, isn't. It's a mediocre <laughs> one round the corner. The unicorn and the wasp. Okay, the doctor doing being doing some detective stuff the with problem, Agatha the Christie problem, is the, pretty fun. The problem is, is like an Agatha Christie based Doctor Who story should be really sick. Yeah. It should be really sick, and it's not hard to make that sick. I know. Um, the way you don't make, make it sick. Just make one of them an alien. The way you don't make it sick to... is you make a, the giant a giant wasp a villain. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. Well, they didn't know what the villain. They had written out most of it without knowing what the villain was. Really. Yeah. And then it was Russell's idea to make it a wasp. I don't think Agatha Christie works like that. <laughs> <laughs> she plans out her stories before. Yeah, they she should have just made killer. one. They, it should have been a dinner party. Doctor Doctor gets brings himself there. 
uh, after the first person dies and he pretends to be a detective. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, this is my plucky assistant. Which what ha- yeah. is what happens and in Chimes of Midnight, which is considerably better and draws <laughs> from Agatha Christie. Yeah. Big, it's should have got Robert Sherman to write it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then one of them should have been an alien in disguise and then he's got to figure out who's the alien yeah. and they're all dying one yeah. by one. Yeah. And it turns out it's Agatha Christie the whole time. And she's an alien. And then she kills the Doctor. And then generates. Doctor Who becomes the Agatha Christie show. Yeah. Things to like, though, uh, Tennant and Donna are really funny in this. Yeah. There's then one bit where he goes, it must have been you, and points at Donna. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, um, and uh, Donna getting all hype about the it's period. It's just really boring. But it is really boring. Don't yeah. watch it. Don't watch it. It's a five out of ten. It's bland. Silence yes. in the library, Forest of the Big Dead. Big boy Malloy, Moffat comes choo, in. Introduces River Song. Oh, introduces the library. Oh, <laughs> introduces the Vashta Narada. Which are really good. Yeah, they got their own show after this. What? The Vashta Narada Hour. Oh, wow, really? What was that like? It's just black. Oh, really? Well, the shadows, aren't they? So not that good. It was all right. Who wrote it? Stephen Moffat. Oh, really? Yeah. How long did it go for? It was a few hours. I don't know. I would just, I would just come into my room and it would be on my TV. It was like I'd a just sit and watch. Are it. you sure you didn't have your like telly turned off? Fuck, that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh. <sighs> Yeah, sorry, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why you interpreted that as the best. <laughs> you know, as a kid, I had my Dalek sex mask. I didn't have a lot of friends. Well, except for the women you were having sex with. <laughs> yeah, but they were all, you know. They Hoovians. Were, they, they were, were weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um, this episode library, Forest of the Dead is really good. Really, really yeah. good. Because it's a really cool story about this library that's been got shadow people in it. They're like carving... Car- con- carnivorous yeah carnivorous shadows that like just eat people in this library which has got every single book and the characters are already great but on top of that you've got river song in it Who's and this sick. is like it's like moffat wrote her entire arc backwards yeah so you get to see the end of river song and later on she's in it and, and that's really brilliant. fun and moffat I swear that he's one of the few writers who does just remember that, like, you have a time lord and that means that you can do shit with time as yeah. a narrative. Well, this is entirely ripped off from, from the, the from time traveler's wife. wife. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't matter. But Doctor Who rips yeah. off everything. So. Yeah. And Moffat's having so much fun. He, he just, he's just constantly writing such good episodes. Yeah. He's just constantly being like the golden child and showing Russell off up like yeah. completely like it must be really frustrating like to be showrunner of Doctor Who and having someone working under you who's just so good yes and you're coming out with love and monsters <laughs> he didn't do that on purpose <laughs> he had to get the absorb <laughs> love and monsters is decent it's either a yeah, six or a one there's not much to say about this it's just no, great it's really good yeah. um, sad sounds good um I don't remember a lot of Donna stuff in this. She but. goes, she dies at the end of Silence in the Library. But she gets saved to the hard drive, and she's in a in a hard drive. World. No, I know River is. No, no, she is. Donna, Donna is, yeah, and she's in, she's got kids. Oh. And the there's a, a stupid oh. girl who dies at the start, and then she's there, and she's wearing a veil, and she's oh. all like, she's all like, the world you're in is not real. Oh. And Donna's like, leave me alone. And she's like, falls in love with this stuttering guy. And she's like, oh, he's handsome. I can't say, can't say a word. Aww. Perfect for me. She looks around the library at the end to find him. And she's like, oh, I must have been in my imagination. And then like, last minute, he's there. Oh, yeah, because this isn't the last time you see Donna. Uh, River. The last no. time is with the Smith. That's his, that's her last canonical one. No, yeah, 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 sort of. This is the last time she's actually a human being yeah. with a body and organs. <laughs> This is the last time she's someone you can fuck. <laughs> Which is all that matters. <laughs> all right, but it is good. Go it's really great. Oh, midnight. I love this. is my favourite New Who episode of Russell Zero. Yeah. I would give it a 10 if I, if, you know, if I could. You can't. <laughs> you What's his can't. problems then? Uh, you know. There aren't any. You it's know, a 10. You know, it, it's, a, it's an episode that takes, I think... You know, it doesn't. It doesn't really go 
in in a, in the way that the blink ha- blink has real finality to it. Midnight does kind of like bathe in the fact that it's like uh, it's unknown, right? And I can respect it for that, but it does mean that it's a less satisfying watch, slightly less slightly than less. something like Blink. All right, fair enough. But the writing is so good. Yes, the right Moff- Russell like Russell, all the Moffats like good episodes must have really got to Russell. Yeah, because. He comes out, I swear he wrote this in like five days yeah. or something like that because it was going to be a completely different episode yeah. where it's like a paranormal investigator like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's all like recorded uh, and then <laughs> Russell was like, no, it's terrible. It's yeah. not right for who. And then he just wrote this out on the weekend. And this is fab. This oh is really working off an ensemble cast. It's the Doctor on his own. Donna's off sunbathing, which I really like <laughs> about it. Yeah, and it's t- like they're off on a little holiday. Like it's they're meant so to be doing creepy. A it and really, it is, it really is creepy. Is creepy. Um, and it plays, and it's it's really it's really Twilight Zone. Very Twilight Zone. Yeah. It's got an interesting. It's got an interesting idea about human nature and what humans are capable of doing you know Pack, like, it's one of those like your kind of like mentality yeah like, you know mob mentality yeah that kind of thing and what that is and and who the doctor is and like yeah. what's great is that tenant is a doctor all about words yes and he has his words taken away from him and that's very good it's really re- so it's similar really well to done. season three it like starts off yeah yeah it gets, it gets, it gets really good yeah. it starts <laughs> well i mean we're, oh. we're gonna see how good it goes, <laughs> but yeah, That's no, it. yeah, this is really, really fantastic. It. Definitely You've need to watch, watch because, like, this is the ones that do, this, the ones that season four get right are so right. Well, in, you to it, midnight are just it, really great. So and Silence, and in, Silence the in the Library yeah. two parter, all of them like such interesting concepts yeah. as well, sci-fi ideas really, that are like yeah. executed really well and explored really nicely. Turn, Turn left. left. So I actually think this I think when Russell goes dark. I think we. I think this is underrated a little bit by us. Oh, but it is just. It's just a whole episode where it just it's all sad. But that's so interesting. <laughs> and then, and then, it and gets then, a bit wonky. And then, and then, <laughs> it does get wonky. Donna, but do, this is a really good because we had a whole episode which is te- tenant. So now we have a whole episode which is you just know, Donna, Donna yeah. on her own. And I and I really like. I so just Chando think so makes a reappearance in this episode. As the As psychic mystic reader. Oh. I, that might be really wrong. Oh I'm God. just gu- guessing. I know she's in another episode. Don't just, quote him on that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but no, I like a lot of it. I love just the whole alternate reality thing. Yeah. And I love how far <laughs> Russell T takes it. Because labor UK, camps. Yeah, the UK starts inciting labor camps <laughs> for immigrants. It's like, re- it's like the whole episode explores what so the world all- would be if the doctor wasn't in it. Yeah. And basically, you get to watch every design disaster be a success apart from canary wharf apart from canary wharf that's not in it no the dalek cybermen invasion oh yeah happens isn't that yeah that's because rose like sets it up oh yeah no it's just not in it well so he only does never it, any he only between does the it world. from Catherine tate's perspective so mm. it starts off with, with the, the titanic it starts off with the Titanic, and then it does the Christmas Star, mm. which is Spider Woman's reappearance. She comes back, yeah, uh, which is great. Uh, <laughs> I love her; yeah. <laughs> she's fantastic. But yeah, they don't they don't do any of the like the Slovene shit. No, that's true. So it's not very consistent. No, that's true. Um, but yeah, it's just basically Donna and her family with Bernie. No, Cribbins. because it, it is because it, it hypothesizes the Doctor dies. At, some point he doesn't die immediately. Oh, it's because Catherine Tate's time was yes, changed. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah Donna's. So it is consistent. It is consistent. You All right. Fucking idiot. Oh, you embarrassing dickhead. Oh, Coming in like you yeah. know Doctor Who. Oh, right. Looks okay, like so I'm the Doctor Who so expert it's like now. Donna never turned yeah, left. That's right. Instead, she turned yes, right, so she it. didn't work at the job yes. where the star came. So mm. the idea is that they got someone else to be. So that yeah. means someone else would have appeared in yeah. the TARDIS in that case. Something like that, or no one appeared. Well, then how would the Doctor have known to go there? I don't know, but the Doctor dies because Do- because Donna Dude, doesn't Donna's do something. not there to pull him Donna away. Donna makes a decision, <laughs> and it, everything goes to shit. Yeah, and it's I like it. I like how it's far it goes. It's pretty fun. You know, I I think like it's just a fun little thing and to Billy see. Billy Piper out. comes back. In you know, it. Th- you talk about Twilight Zone. This feels particularly Twilight Zone. Yeah, but it, it, in the, the problem in a good is way. is that like this is only satisfying if you've seen all of Who. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. only it's so like it's like if Doctor Who was a drama. But from here on was this yeah. whole. 
but this whole a, thing going yeah, on. <laughs> it just becomes only only Doctor Who fans can watch this. From here off, it's like yeah. Doctor Who fans only. Yeah. No, no yeah. normies allowed. It just it, uh, as a standout and, and Doctor Who episode on its it, own. It, it is weird because good. she starts getting on with things, and then what does Donna need her to do to go back and turn left? Right, that's yeah. what she needs her to do and to that's rewrite. What they'd get her to do. Yeah, that. and then but then once Do- Rose starts getting reintroduced, it starts getting all a bit like. It's all yeah. like, ooh. It's, like, it's all it's, about that. Uh, yeah, it's because Billy Piper comes back and she just looks so different. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like she's constantly gurning. Do you know the so part? She's like, no, yeah. Hello. I love the doctor. Um, no, and, that's not right at all. Also, I think at this point as well, like it was so easy to see like the, the finales have like found like a formula to them as well yeah. by this point. And that they followed that formula but just tried to escalate it each yeah. time. And that wasn't quite like cutting the jib, yeah. maybe. Turn, turn left is okay. It is okay. It's interesting. If you've seen all of Doctor Who, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and it's like a fun little look into things. This is six out of ten. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Journey's end. Stolen Earth and oh, Journey's God. end. None Stol- of this makes any fucking sense. <laughs> this is dumb. It's nice this to see everyone it. together, but to Davros a point, is to really a point. fucked. There. So, so uh, before we go, because Journey's end is a mess, but the Stolen Earth isn't so much of a mess. Yeah. Sto- the Stolen it's, Earth is... I really like the opening bit. Yeah. Where all the where the Dalek invasions happening and you get to see Torchwood, you yeah. get to see Sarah Jane, yeah. you get to see all these different like people react to yeah. like the Earth ending. Yeah. Bernard Cribbins, you know, with a paintball gun yeah. shoots a Dalek's eye stalk. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, and then the doctor's just like swanning about, being like, "Where's Earth gone?" Yeah, he uh, feels a bit distant, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, then they have a Skype chat. Yeah, um, and they all ring the doctor. To, yeah. So he knows their location. And, and Martha's then in unit, and she gets given the movie the Oster Hagen Key, key. Uh, which is a and yeah, real it's basically like bunch of red herring. It's like people receive a bunch Russell's, of red herrings. Yeah, because this is Russell's last season. He really just wants to bring everyone back. Yeah, he's just like having a lot of fun. And, doesn't and matter I think, if it I think doesn't doesn't if you've seen sense. all of Doctor yeah. Who, if you've been seeing all of Doctor Who up until this point, you can probably enjoy this. Yeah, I think. Um, but actually, like, I wouldn't want to go back to this two-parter particularly. It's a really terrible Dalek story. It's really, well. really loose. So they steal really... the Earth to make the... Uh, what's it called? The, the laser. <laughs> the big deadly laser. Yeah. Which kills everything that is the Dalek. Yes. Oh, and then the Doctor... Bec- clones... Him, there's a human... There's a, no, half-human, From half-time the Doctor's log. hand, he grows out. Yeah. And then Virgin. he leaves him on with Rose. Yes. Yeah. So all, it's all and weird. Donna's and so, memory has to get wiped. Because Donna takes in the Doctor. So there's a weird thing that happens. Someone, Some disaster happens. And then we get left with like a second Doctor who grew out of the Doctor's cut off <laughs> hand from the Christmas special. And Donna has the brain of Tennant as well. And, the, and it's because during this weird regeneration process, the Doctor pulled on Donna. So now we've got Doctor Donna. And we've also got Doctor who's a human. And he's yeah. a bit... And they... They sort out everything yeah. <laughs> by going over to the Dalek board and just twiddling things yeah. about. And then the Doctor kills all the Daleks, and the other Doctor's like, "No!" Yeah, that's Even why he kills the all the Doctor Daleks genocides all the time. All the Daleks. That's what happens every time. There's yeah. a fleet of Daleks. They just all get killed. Yeah, so every like, time. And it's like, and especially after the Doctor's been all in this preach of like, "I would never." Yeah, yeah. And how and he's haunted by the time war, and then he's like, "Yeah." He's like me, but angry. I would yeah. never have killed the Daleks. What would you have like, done then? What would you have done yeah. then? You didn't seem that bothered by yeah, it. Yeah. You didn't seem that ticked What's the off. solution with the Daleks? Do you just say, what? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? How do you sort it out? And Davros is not that good in it, <laughs> really. He's well performed. He's though. well performed. He's having he fun. Well yeah. um, and, then, and then it gets weirder, and it completely delegitimizes Rose's send-off when he, they leave her with the human doctor. And then the Mickey to decides raise. to stay on Earth. He's That's like, right. actually, I'm not going to go to the parallel world. And he comes back. And yeah. it's just really... Yeah. It's just really... Br- it's and like Jack bald- Hartness is in it. Yeah, everyone's in it. Every everyone's Sarah in it. Jane's yeah. in it as yeah. well. There's a scene where they're all threatening the Daleks with their different like yeah. MacGuffins. Like, just, everyone has a MacGuffin and yeah. they will use it and then they don't. Because I just I feel Harry. like maybe they should have stripped back a bit. So I think it shouldn't have been a Dalek story. Yeah. I think, first of all, like we've had tons of Daleks be the final story. At this point, you've had the Master, who you've established as a bigger threat. Yeah. Um, so, like, why have 
well, I have Daleks again. I mean, Davros, sure. But Davros was always... Like, Davros is really hard to make him serious yeah. and make him work. Too much think. going on, really. Yeah, there's so much yeah. happening. And now you're trying to introduce the all the companions. The Osterhagen key is as Martha's got the Osterhagen key. And Which she's going to use it. Nukes under the air. She's going to use it. She's and at, the, at this point as well, I think at this point as well, so many things have been solved by like MacGuffin-y things. So many finales had the solutions had been because the first finale with Eccleston has consequences. He absorbs the time vortex and then, and he, then has he has to, to regenerate. regenerate. Yeah. He dies, so it feels like it has yeah. impact to it. Yeah. Then from then on, really, like everybody like lives. We haven't really lost anyone. Like Rose doesn't die in half, and she goes to a different dimension. It's very convenient, isn't it? And it's very comfy that that all works out. And then um, Rose should have died. In Martha's finale, in Martha's finale, Cybermen should have killed Rose. Yeah, that would have been turned her into a Cyberman. Cyberman. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then like in Martha's finale, like all time gets reversed because everyone believes in the doctor it's like really really loose and in this yeah. one like the, the, you they, have this really sh- far-fetched just done on earth that remembered it all yeah. yeah and then you have this really far-fetched explanation to give doctor the doctor the doctor a clone of himself and give Donna the brain of the doctor and both of those are working to solve two different things they're working to give Rose some sort of more redemption for some reason which she doesn't need and to give make them work together to solve to things to make it so that Donna's memory has to get wiped and that as well and then also so that the Doctor can kill the Daleks, the Daleks yeah and it's not, not the kill Doctor them. kill yeah. the Daleks right and all of that is just a bit dumb yeah. <laughs> it feels a bit loose and then it's like it's, once, it's, you, once you start getting into the space of like oh the Doctor doesn't kill anyone yeah it's just you, guys like the Daleks are Nazis, basically. <laughs> you you can just, kill... There's the yeah. only solution with the <laughs> what, Daleks. What are you going to do with the Daleks? Like, Sit and chat to them. I mean, because, like, Capaldi seasons later on, which we'll get to more in depth, but are about him trying to look for the humanity in Daleks. That's yeah. what his mission is with the Daleks. Yeah. But, like, they never lay out a ground plan for that with, with Tenon at all. No. But they lay out a character thing for him to not kill the Daleks. It's just weird, weird. And then Donna loses her memory, and it kind of feels like Donna like is short lived. You kind of w- would yeah. have liked her around a bit more. Um, and she never gets to remember as well. Yeah, and she never really gets her. Uh, like, oh, time. She, oh, maybe she does. I can't remember. Yeah, who knows? She may do in the end of time. But anyway, yeah. but let's see it. the entire rating for season four. Five point nine. nine, despite the journey's ends yeah. being rated so lowly. Yeah, five point nine well, is because, the highest like, it's tenant because it's rating. It's got a ton of nine. It's got it's like a bunch of nines and it's got a really high. Planet two. of the Ud. Yeah, it's got uh, uh, Silence two. of the Library. Yeah, these are all really good episodes. Like yeah. really, really strong. And, and then, also the first it, one. Is yeah, really and good. the first one really, really good. So it doesn't like it. It, it gives you the, the high. It, the highlights come more frequently. And then the all the bad points. episodes are just like pretty mediocre ones. They're not horrific. But it is funny that like Tenant does for us like have a huge drop compared to Yeah, Eccleston, the no seven season, you know. But yeah, overall, let's go into the let's go the, into the the, the specials. Final specials. Mini so seasons we mini give it a three rating. out of ten. We just get we just so go straight into the whole mini series with the where Russell did five episodes. Uh, the the first one was uh, the what's what's the ne- the next doctor the next doctor which is a cyber episode is the n- only other Cyberman episode other than Age of Steel and the one with the dialects trash and it's so trash isn't there a giant Cyberman in it there's a giant Cyberman yes and there's an actor this guy he thinks that he want he's who's he's, he's in a political he's in political dramas. I do quite uh, like him. He's good actor. I do quite like his performance. I like his costume. I like his costume. Yeah. And he thinks he's the Doctor, but he's not the Doctor. Yeah. He's just been given all the memories of the Doctor. And then you, and then you have the Easter one, which is called the something of Mars. No, that's the Waters of Mars. Oh. Before that, you have like it's like isn't it like a desert bus? The planet Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet. Or something like something that. Something like yeah. that. But that's a. Shit, it's so, it's so awful, it's so, so cheesy. Like, I don't know, man. Not good, not good at all. Though I do like the image of a London bus in a desert. It's a good image. Yeah. Uh, but the chemistry between and her and Water the Doctor of Mars is the best one. Water of Mars, where the Doctor goes insane and <laughs> starts talking about. He's like, I can change the past. I own time. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah, and then that's and when he really sees the scene. Ood as well. Yeah, <laughs> so there's an Ood in it. Uh, there's a <laughs> Which really, is always a win. <laughs> there's a really good scene where, because it's set in 2059, and she talks about Journey's Ends when mm. she was a kid, and she sees a Dalek. Yeah. through her window and I quite like That's that good. scene and, and the, the water villain, monsters look quite creepy yeah but what really really like lets the whole miniseries down as a whole 
Russell's worst episodes by far. Fuck me. End of time. Fuck me, man. With the master coming oh back, my God. eating chicken, this, shooting lightning this episode, out his hands. This whole t- is a two parter, right? Or yeah, is it just one? It's two parter. Yeah. yeah. Um, the time lords get brought back. It's shit. It's like my favorite thing. <laughs> my favorite thing about it. Is that when they re- when they do the scene where they're bringing back the master and they're like, yeah, what uh, what was his name? Saxon. 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 President Saxon left his like for some reason he left a book. He wrote a book in his time and they're like he he had the recipe for the potion of life yeah. and we're bringing him back. All we need is a bit of biology from his wife and then they're like ah. Oh! He's yeah, like no he's you don't know back. who he is yeah, and like, exactly. we know he's the master and then the wife is like no but we managed to figure out how to make the opposite <laughs> a potion of death and the mom's like no and then he, she pours it in and that's why he's fucked and it's so dumb it's a really weird nerd nerd moment though because end of time part two when wilfred wilfred is in the get radiation chamber which can only be opened <laughs> in a specific way mm. so the doctor decides to save wilfred he gets the radiation instead and he has to he has to die basically mm. but that's like within the beginning of the second episode it resolves yeah. and there's a big chunk left like 20 yeah, minutes 25 is, yeah. minutes left <laughs> so the, david Tennant just walks around saying goodbye to everyone yeah, and that was so dumb that now it makes fun of that like they've constantly poked fun of the fact that Tennant did that because yeah. it's like he is just re- <laughs> regenerating <laughs> like when eccleston regenerated he didn't lose all his mates yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it feels really weird um and it, it's just it's really just Russell saying goodbye. it's so yeah. melodramatic yeah though. it's so hammy it's, it's so, so played it's out it's quite funny though. it is quite funny yeah. and then john sim turns everyone into him <laughs> yeah that happens at the end of the first part. which is really dumb <laughs> yeah and they're like well, they're all me everyone's yeah. me <laughs> And the Time Lords come back, and it's the Doctor's mum is in it. Yeah, and and, it's uh, but weird. The do- the and then the Doctor's and- like on stained glass in the church. Yeah, and Mickey and Martha come back. They're Mickey together, and they're dating. Yeah, which I quite like. I mean, it makes me a bit uncomfortable. It's Why the two just put the two the black two people cucks. together? Like. <laughs> You're black. <laughs> yeah. You're black. Mm. Like there's you no. Were cut by Rose. It's like a complete random selection because like. Like, they didn't even show interest in each other in Journey's End or what. They weren't even together. They yeah. never got in the same yeah, room. Yeah. And he's like, I'm staying on Earth. He's like, why would they even circulate? But I guess he's a military guy. But yeah, I don't know. What, it's just, it is dumb. Yeah. And they're like, oh, there's the doctor. And then the, and then the doctor love... just nods at them. And then doesn't he give Donna a winning lottery ticket? <laughs> he gives Donna a winning lottery ticket. <laughs> he, he saves Mickey and Martha from a, a Sontaran. Yeah, he 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 puts Captain Jack Harkness together with Alonzo, the guy who was driving the yes. Titanic. Yes, he he uh, Everyone, goes and sees Rose done. before in two thousand and five New Year. Yeah, and just says oh, I reckon it's gonna be a great year. Yes, like, <laughs> and then he goes he year. goes to see the girl who from human nature who fell in love with the doctor does he yeah i forgot and oh he no he goes to see her great great granddaughter yeah, yeah. and then he talks about her. Oh. <laughs> he gets the book signed yeah. yes because it's like she's not even a character that you needed to say goodbye to is he really so over bloating it and then it's like he then no saves sarah King jane's Dallas. son from being hit by a car it's, it's kind of like you only get one. It's a bit much, yeah. and it's like it's like when you compare that to like how Moffat finishes off like his Smith run, for instance, or even his even like his later on. Run. Like it's much more balanced, and like we'll because we'll, we'll, like we'll talk about that a lot. Yeah. Like, I'll rave about it probably. But um, the, but yeah, his last words are. I don't, don't want to go. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, overall, going Tenen, anywhere. Tenen as a doctor. Such a great actor. So great. He brings and and this season has some it, of the most special, like, unique episodes. I think particularly with the Donna season. It's like, such a shame that Russell stuff. could not, like, do some really sick episodes. It, yeah, he yeah. never... He, apart from, apart from like, the stuff it's he does he with Eccleston. It's because he went companionless. I think that's yeah. why it sucked so much. You, you because reckon? the end of time, he just didn't have any anchor but in the, there. But the Water, water of Mars, like, she felt a bit stronger. She felt a bit nicer. Yes, and she Water of Mars is the best one, but still not that good. No. It's still a bit generic. 
because Russell is a fantastic character writer. Mm. Russell writes some really good characters. Donna, you know, Rose, Mickey, Captain Jack, even Martha to Jackie. some degree. Jackie, yeah. yeah. He really is, he's They're very dense much with in characters. those soap, you know, soap yeah. melodramatic kind of relationships. And the Doctor didn't really have any connection apart from Wilfred. Yeah. And Wilfred's just not quite good enough. No. And I think and, that's why... And I, do, I do think the biggest problem with like Tennant's run, which Eccleston didn't have as much, is that... Uh, it shifts into like really high melodrama much more easily. Yeah. Uh, whereas like Tennant, Eccleston's Doctor was about what he wasn't letting out anyway. Yeah, he, he was, was about being yeah. insular and about yeah. being yeah, 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 aloof yeah. and yeah. enigmatic. Because whereas Tennant was much yeah. more open with people. We, we see apartment. Moffat is really good at writing like completely out there weird stories like that one off, like kind of yeah. in a bubble, like kind of like here's mm. my here's my take on this gas yeah. mask people. Let's go. Um, whereas what Russell's really great with is building up these mm. long things over time. Like let's bring back the, you yeah. know, the fog watch. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that feels really strong about his entire run of show runner, yeah. that his entire universe. Even in season really, four, there's yeah. like planets disappearing yeah. and they're it, constantly it, mentioning yeah. that. And, it, uh, and yeah. it feels really consistent and it yeah. feels like a universe that's being inhabited yeah. um, in a really fun way. And it's nice to be a part of it. And it's very welcoming that universe as well. It's not that like, you know, you go, oh, I could really travel with the doctor. So there's some really great, like, gra uh, apple tasting grass and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, so there's loads it of weird, feels it's like really it belongs playful. together. And then whenever they go back and do the history ones, the monsters are a bit different mm. as well. They just sort of operate differently. Yeah, they're of a different Because flavor. in the future, you wouldn't have those witches or you wouldn't have yeah. those, like, the Gelf, those monsters, or the Pompeii fire people, even. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have a slightly different biology to yeah, yeah, and definitely. I think And they work with human even mythology. Even the family of blood, yeah. like, they are a bit different. Yeah, you definitely, know? no. And I think that's what really helps as well. Yeah, because, like, this run is, like, it's a 5 out of 10, but, like, you know, a lot of his... Oh, is there an overall rating? Have we done that? Yeah, we've, we've done that. it, yeah. yeah. It's a 3 out of 10. Yeah. We didn't do the runs. Yeah. But, like, like overall, like, a lot of, like, the 10 and stuff is... All of it is, it's like, 5 out of 10. It's almost a 6. It's really close Almost a 6. six yeah. And, like... But that's not to say that there aren't, like, these great moments in those seasons either. And then Eccleston season is just, like, really good. Yeah, <laughs> it's Eccleston's just, like, really fire, fantastic. Yeah. It is just fire all so, around. Yeah, are we going to take a break? Are we going to... Yeah. So, what happens now is that's the Russell T era... Yeah. We're going to go on... Because this is long enough. We, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we were going to do it as one full run, but yeah. we slowly realised this is going to take us ages to yeah. talk through everything. But we're enjoying doing this, so we're going to do I Moffat's you've run. you've enjoyed watching. Yeah, if you have we're watched. We're going to go and do listened. Moffat. And next. we're going to do Moffat we're gonna, next. So we're going to do season five to ten next. Yeah, and that's going to so be really good fun. If you so. enjoy this, you'll enjoy that too. So tune in Yeah, tune in for that. Uh, buy the Nitpicks merch. Nitpicks.co.uk it's up on the website we've got tasty white jumpers it's, yeah um, and let us know if you like this and if you don't like this if uh, you hate don't... this let us know if you hate this yeah. let us know I mean we don't care we're doing it for us so yeah. fuck you but let we're, us know we're anyway we're, <laughs> we're, yeah we're doing this for us we're just performing yeah. to yeah, the camera we're just performing to the camera, camera for us just to entertain ourselves yeah that's really. right that's it yeah. um, just similar to how I would yeah, talk to my, my Blink uh -huh. DVD yeah. and actually just for myself tell us what you think of our ratings and maybe if you are really fucking nerdy why don't you just rate all the episodes like <laughs> we did in the comments like why don't you just do that <laughs> or why don't you just tell us what you disagree with most or what yeah. you think we've underrated or overrated the most yeah uh but yeah, great. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.